Leave your challenges. If you are not there, your challenges will not be there. Pray for yourself. This is about my life. Change my life. Change my life. Shalabarakata paratus. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen to me, please. Please listen. Many times we focus on the things we want changed not knowing that the troubles came because you were there no dead man has trouble no dead man needs finances no dead man needs breakthrough no dead man needs speed delay comes because you are there speed is needed because you are there everything is required because you are there we focus on everything we want change and forget about ourselves one of the primary assignments of prayer, listen, is not to petition God to meet needs. It's not even an instrument of warfare to ward off the power of darkness. It's not just a spiritual system of legislature. One of the major assignments of prayer, and this is where many believers continue to miss it, Prayer was originally designed to change you. Let me show you a scripture. Luke chapter, keep standing. Luke chapter 9. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Luke chapter 9. Luke chapter 9, please. Be sensitive tonight. Luke chapter 9. From verse 29. Everybody read. One, two, read. And as he prayed, the fashion of his countenance was altered and his raiment was white glistening. He prayed and nothing around him changed. It was him that changed. When he prayed, his countenance changed, his raiment changed. You can change yourself in prayer. Did you hear what I said? You can change like, a, how many of you have seen a snake molting? is a system by which they grow they expand they come out of their former self into a new self so when you see that snake the the the, the former self the, the shell of it that is left is the former one you can pray yourself into a newer version of yourself you can pray yourself into a wiser version of yourself you can let me tell you this prayer is not the only key but whenever prayer is not the key, it becomes the hand that holds the key. If prayer is not the key, then it is the hand that holds the key to the door. Everything plus prayer increases you. Knowledge plus prayer increases you. Grace plus prayer increases you. Are we together? And as he prayed, he didn't say his situation changed. No. He didn't say as he prayed. Those, there were times that he prayed and people from a distance were blessed. But this time around, as he prayed, he was the one changing. We're going to see pray a few minutes. This prayer is not for my father. This prayer is not for my bank account. This prayer is not, oh God, take darkness out of my life. This prayer is change me. This is not the best fashion of me. This is not the best. It's, it's, like an, it's like an incubation room. Bring something out of my prayer life, oh God, that is not what went in. Is someone praying? Lift your voice. Pray. You are praying to be changed. You are not praying for things to change. You are praying to be changed.
Fix your eyes on Jesus and pray. They looked on to him and their faces were lighted. Do not say I'm tired. Do not say I'm weak. That's a lie of the devil. Do not say I can't pray. You pray for your destiny by praying for yourself. You change things by changing. Take this weak version of myself to a strong version, oh God. Take this weak version of myself, this weak version of a man of God, this weak version of a woman, this weak version of an entrepreneur, this weak version of a career person. Let it be replaced by a strong one. There is power in prayer. Pray yourself to strength. Pray your way to authority. Pray your way to power in the spirit. Pray your way to strength. But the people that do know their God, they shall be strong. Pray your way to faith. That thy profiting may appear unto all. That thy profiting may appear unto all. That thy profiting may appear unto all. Your profiting will never, never, never appear unto all by default. You must pray your way to results. Pray your way to real power. Pray your way to strength. Pray your way to real anointing. Pray out weakness from your life. Pray out fear from your life. Out of lukewarmness. Pray your way out of doubt and unbelief.
there is no male or female there is no young and old when it comes to spiritual things there is neither Jew nor Greek listen listen to me listen to me greatness is what you attract to your life by reason of what you are becoming more than by reason of what you have your results are a reflection of the transitions happening in your life or otherwise it is cheaper to change yourself than to change things because when you change things must change everything in your life is a statement to your destiny this is where you are in the spirit this is where you are in knowledge this is where you are in destiny instead of shifting things one by one shift yourself and everything will rise to follow you you truly change things by changing. 
you don't change things it's harder to change things one by one everything you draw to your life is a reflection of what version of you when you change your results change when you change even the operation of the spirit over your life changes he does not relate with everybody the same way at every dimension no hallelujah it's important we pray the biblical way to deal with weakness is to pray you pray out a weak version of yourself if you fail in the day of battle he say your strength is small hallelujah praise the lord please be seated god bless you be seated and be sensitive please play the strings for me mighty god give you praise Good evening, everybody. It's my goal and my prayer and my desire that every service becomes an experience for someone's life, an experience for someone's destiny. We've been doing this for many years, but we will never take for granted the opportunity that God gives for our growth and our transition every service is prepared intentionally not only to bless not just to honor the continuity of a ministry's program but it's an opportunity for the holy spirit to come once again and to change our lives and among the things we must rebuke is familiarity you must rebuke familiarity i know how god works I know how God moves. I know somebody is about to shout. I know somebody will roll as usual. This is what you expect in Koinonia. That familiarity will turn you from a partaker to a spectator. You can be in a place, be a witness, a spectator, and not a partaker. It takes more than just looking around to be a partaker. It takes a heart connection an awareness that one moment in god's presence effectively maximized can turn a man's life around people say one word from god can change a man no one word from god does not change a man one word from god received understood and engaged is what will change a man one word from god to change a man is deception the devil has never been afraid of the word of god when the sower sowed it was satan himself that came and carried the seed one word received with meekness the bible says the engrafted word praise the lord I came tonight with a very serious burden um, and many times when the Lord wants you to teach teachings that are very very seasonal and very called for especially as the times demand he will bring them not as sermons he will bring them as burdens it will be a strong burden upon your spirit that will refuse to leave praise the Lord and um, I've been focusing a lot, especially about what I just talked about, the power of changing things by changing. The power of growing to superior realms of results by being the one to grow. I think that sometimes we pay so much attention on the things around us we desire changed that we forget that those things are there because of us that means that if i refuse to transit in life no matter what i try to move it will come down back to my level 
Are we together now? There are many things you would not need to pray for if you pray for yourself. Let me repeat. There are many things you would not need to pray for if you pray on and for yourself. That means if you become the project of the growth, there are many things you may not need to pray for again. It's true. In praying for yourself, you will find out that you are praying for many other things. Your prayer life and indeed your destiny will be hard if you focus on any other thing outside yourself. Pay attention to yourself. The development. Your transition. And then you will find out that in doing so, you are automatically influencing every result you desire. Let me repeat what I said earlier on while we're praying. That greatness and success is what you attract to yourself not what you pursue what you attract to yourself by reason of who you are becoming if i'm still the person yesterday today then i do not deserve to get any result different from that which i had yesterday the results you seek cannot come to this version of you they are to come but not this version of you. The anointing that you seek cannot come upon this version of you. The prosperity you seek cannot enter into the pocket of this version of you. So many times, the power of restraint is not always demonic. It is God waiting for the version of you that matches that result. Please listen and learn and grow. This is spiritual intelligence. Not every restraint is an attack from Satan. Not every restraint is proof that there is something demonic. Many times it can be God waiting for the version of you that is fit. It is not because God cannot take the members from 100 to 10,000. It is not because God cannot take your finances from 500 to 10 million. It is not because God cannot take your grace from this level to that level. But it cannot come on this version of you. The Bible says you cannot put new wine in an old wine skin. They are all called wine skins. The difference is old and new. You are still called a human being. But the difference is the old version and the new version. You are still called a man of God. But the man of God before and the new man of God. Ah, Jesus said, why seekest ye the dead? among the living there was a version of me that lied lifeless you saw that version on the ground but it's no longer in the grave a version of me has arisen in the glory of the father not the one that walked the earth now without blood a version of me that lives by another life i learned this in my life and as a person i stopped wasting my time to change things it is hard to change things do you know how many things in your life you have to change if you pursue them one by one think how hard it is to look for good friends think how hard it is to look for quality connections and relationships think how hard it is to look for information every level already has the systems and the provisions waiting the cheapest way listen it is harder for me to try to reach to something higher than me to bring it down to my level it is wiser to grow to that level where it no longer becomes difficult remember if you watch a child growing up like one of these are little ones they try to reach for something and you see the difficulty they can fall many times it is cheaper sometimes they can try and stand upon something that can throw them and then pick what they want but an adult who has grown just comes and he can look from that height and without pressure pick the things that are hard today are not hard it is your level that defines them so if you grow you will find out that they are not so the finances that looks like a monster of a realm Lord, when will I go out of this? It's only the old version of you 
is looking at the destiny that only the new version of you can enter so it looks hard spiritually lord is it possible that i can step into this how will i start seeing visions what does it look like to see a vision will i be in myself will i fall down is it that i'm dying those are unnecessary questions just grow when you grow and enter those realms by experience you will have those answers there are many things about your biological life you did not need to ask it's a burden to ask every question what happens to me when i'm a teenager what happens when i'm 13 give me a detailed information of what will happen when i'm 14 years it's unnecessary just grow as you grow many times you will find out that you didn't even consciously pay attention to those transitions let me ask you a question do you know where your clothes of 10 years were do you know where they are now can you remember giving them out no can you remember burning them up no can you remember packing them to keep somewhere no they left for these ones to come he said mystery you don't understand remember where your first phone is remember you didn't throw it remember you didn't sell it remember you didn't sew it but where is it many times we don't know the things around us are living things too they are governed by laws they live quietly and we do not know may the lord give us understanding that the things that we call dead are not dead they can hear and they can see they are more obedient to the systems of god than us are we together I never had to tell anybody stop giving me this kind of honorarium stop tearing 2a and rolling 500 naira inside and chucking it in my pocket as a bribe that would be stupid and arrogant the key is to grow when you grow a law prohibits individuals from approaching you that way are we together So many times when you look at the things around you and you don't like them they were not designed to live they were designed to be the reality of anybody in that realm if you don't like them move to the realm where there are realities that match your desire please listen to me this will give us intelligence there are many prayers we pray that are it's just the mercy of god that answers them they are not wise prayers they are prayers that are a reflection of spiritual ignorance many times the prayer is not take this away from me many times the prayer is take me out of this realm the realities are fixed they are there an heir as long as he's a child he says different not from a slave though he be lord of all he says but he's under tutors and governors that means that when you find out there are tutors and governors around the issue is not to drive them away the issue is to grow out of childhood and you may not need them again praise the lord yes another analogy and then i'll begin to teach on what i have tonight there are many primary schools i believe they still do it where the junior students in that primary school wear short trousers is that correct and then when they get to a particular level they start to wear long trousers now imagine someone in say primary two goes to the teacher and say look i'm tall is something that came genetically and because of that it may not look good on me to wear a short trouser the rules will not change because of you but when you change you change the rules you don't change the rules by changing the rules you change the rules by leaving the realm where those rules apply all rules don't apply the same at every level it is true are we together so we seek to transit by the spirit to realms where certain things no longer hold listen to me look up please look up you're writing but look up if you do not pay attention to what i'm saying this is what will happen to you everybody speaks from the reality that his transition has captured 
So many times when you hear people speak, you will interpret their speakings from your realm. And based on your realm, it looks untrue. With all humility, if in 24 hours nobody favors me, is proof something is wrong at this level. You see that? Yes. The level God has brought me makes it is either an attack or something about my life. 24 hours cannot happen without someone favoring me. This is the reality at this level. Are we together now? Yes. Once upon a time, if I'm not favored in a year, I'll have to be patient for one year to know whether it's an attack or not. At the end of that year, I say, no, this year it, it was not like that. And then you pray. And then you rise to a realm where it becomes a month. You rise to a realm where it becomes a week. If nobody calls my phone in 24 hours seeking for help, something is wrong. I will go for a retreat. 24 hours. I wake up every day without fail with text messages of people needing the grace of God upon my life. Once upon a time, I think something happened to my phone and there was no network. I got up in the morning and flipped my phone and it was empty. I said, this is something is wrong. Something has to be wrong. In five hours, my phone did not ring. Nobody sent a text. Something is wrong. I off the phone and put it back. And there the text. I said, this is it. Because that result did not look like my realm. Now, listen, please. Listen to what I'm teaching you. There are levels where if you pray for one hour, you must punish yourself. Hello? This is not religion. You truly must punish yourself because the demand on your life, the daily servicing of your altar, one hour is too small. If you don't meet that target, you must punish yourself by an extended prayer time someday. Why? Because before you finish thanking God for what he has done, the time should have gone. What God has done is to, before you start listening and say, Lord, let me name my blessings. Thank you because the other day they didn't kill my member somewhere. Thank you, oh God, because the wicked did not get a reason to laugh. One hour is already covered. There are people who don't have much to say thank you for. Thank you, Lord, because I'm alive. Thank you because even though my father is alive, oh, Lord, here are my needs. But there are things God has done to you in some realms. It is wicked to use 10 minutes to say thank you. Now, the time someone is interceding is your thanksgiving time. You use that one hour to roll on the ground and say thank you. Sometimes you use 15 minutes to just keep quiet and let your tears say thank you before you start talking. That's why I'm telling you praying for one hour in certain realms is not talking in tongues for one hour. There are activities in some realms that is only intercession and warfare. What and what? intercession and warfare because of the seriousness of where you are but there are realms that god has given you some level of victory intercession will be after a prolonged period of cry and thanksgiving so two people go to pray come show two people go to pray they represent different realms one person enters and says, Father, I give you thanks. You are the lion of the tribe of Judah. This is the day or the night, whatever time of the day that the Lord has made. I rejoice. I give thanks. Shut up. And straight you go into, Lord, these are my petitions. Help me. Oh, this is plenty. The list is increasing. Lord, help me. At a point, you start praying. You start lamenting. You are right at that realm. You will find out that the person you went to pray with, you will think he cannot pray. This is what you will be doing. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I glorify you. He's praying, oh, you are merciful. You are merciful. You are merciful. And a song is playing. Lord, you are merciful. And you are there praying and getting angry. I say, hey, this guy doesn't know what he's doing. You are not at the same realm. Listen carefully. Listen carefully. Listen. That person is taking out time. Later on, you are exhausted. You are thirsty. You are tired. 
you don't even know you have been praying and miss all around he knows you are praying and miss he's not correcting you because there is a provision of god's mercy that whoever is at that realm god should ignore his mistakes and answer him so you find out that you are praying a lot of nonsense at that realm and you receive supernatural answers they are not a proof that you are correct the person standing here already knows you didn't enter his gates with thanksgiving you didn't even get to his court you are shouting around the gate but god came out and helped you that is not how he helps men he just came to help you now watch this this is if you understand you will now get what i'm telling you that your prayer life imagine that two of you come you you truly with without without a sense of pride two of you cannot be prayer partners it's not like you can pray together but you can't be prayer partners you can only be prayer partners corporately and to round up maybe belong to the same group because this guy is already he brings out his piece of paper and there's nothing to bring out you tell him all right pray and you lie down flat only to stand up after two hours you are not sleeping no it's part of the prayer time and the guy says God, bros i'm tired i'll finish i need to go i'll come back later and he says, okay god bless you there are certain realms where you cannot pray with people there are things god will do and tell you that requires you alone with him so when people are there he will relate with you in a way and manner that is general and you have to remain behind because you know you and god have not talked yet people are there and you are praying generally oh lord thank you for everything okay may god bless you sir we are going to sleep and you tell them go and then immediately you go the atmosphere changes the holy spirit now comes as one adorned for that realm there are ways he cannot relate the the weirdness of his operation at that realm cannot be understood by people because sometimes as soon as he comes there you will do things that don't make sense you will walk alone and fall down and that's it you are in a vision and for the next 30 minutes you are there do you think that person will leave you alone he will wake you and shift you till your spirit cannot return back to your body again so he will allow them go you don't covet a man's prayer dimension by saying let that dimension come and meet me no you don't have enough testimonies to pray that kind of prayer you've not gone through enough pain to know what a man will be doing for three hours everything in your life is paid for by everybody you don't know what it means to be attacked what commission have you been given what assignment what what is the devil going to attack you for it's just general attacks here and there just to bring down your spiritual life nothing serious so you can stroll around for 10 minutes and go but there are certain burdens that when at, when they're on your head the time it takes me to pray for one department alone in koinonia will surprise you there are, when you know see listen the weight on your head determines how you walk if you are carrying a cup on your head you can even leave it and walk around if you are carrying a headpan, you can walk around. If you are carrying a destiny, the walk is so slippery, God must lead you on how to walk. This is what people do not understand. So this thing people generally call prayer is many things at many realms. That's why you see me encourage people. I... As I began to grow in the things of God, I found out that I cannot pray comfortably in the daytime. My life at this level will not allow me to maximize prayer. The distraction that will come from my phone ringing, I don't off my phone. Whether I'm on pulpit or my phone is, if my phone is off, I'm either taking a flight or maybe something is done. You see that? I charge my phone an average of twice every day. I have to because of you. Do you know living is not general the concept of living is dimensional listen to me that means when you are tired of certain things certain experiences around you someone else is coming into that dimension 
So you are not going to say, Lord, take away those things. Your job is to rise to the next dimension. Are we together now? Yes. Once upon a time, I remember those days, if there were 30 people and I was going to minister to them, I would have to lay hands on everybody one by one. It was very exhausting. And I said, God, there has to be a better way. Once upon a time, if God is talking to me and I see in the spirit that God wants to touch you, I will have to walk to you to touch you for that word to come to pass. That was, it was not what God could do. It was what my renewal and my alignment at that level could allow him to do. And I knew that if I continue that way, what if I have 30 minutes to preach and God wants to touch 500 people? I follow them one by one, touch somebody in overflow three, come back, touch this. How do you touch the people online? And then I said, God, there has to be a way. And he said, of course, there is a way. For I am a man under authority. And I say to one, go, and he goeth. That your words can become you. You don't have to move. Your presence can be poured into your words. You can send it on errand. Backed up by the anointing of the spirit. And it will produce the same effect. And I said, okay God, what does it take? Let's go. If you are interested. Now when you rise to that realm, you will see it. And then sometimes a new believer will sit down and be wondering, wow, how does this thing happen? If the Holy Spirit shows me that he wants to touch someone in overflow three now, you see, all I need to do is not just to speak it or say it. You see that? You agree with God. It looks simple until you are taught what really happens. You come and collect the mic and talk. I will tell you when God wants to touch somebody, your job is to just say it. And you will be very surprised to see as if God doesn't love you. So most of this prayer, Lord, why did you disgrace me? I went to this meeting expecting the result of a realm. You went to the meeting with the expectation of a realm you have not entered. Because you saw somebody and you said, no, Abba, this must happen. Are we together? There are people who carry graces as soon as they sit down and begin to talk, something about the realm and the dimension of God that they walk in will force you to pay attention. They don't have to say, keep quiet. No. There are realms where they say, oh yeah, keep quiet now. Praise God, everybody, listen. But there are realms where there are other provisions. Some spiritual arsenals have been provided that compel men to hear you. So you can see two men of God operating. Everybody's bringing his possibilities. Are we together? Yes. To believe that everybody is just generically carrying eternal life, carrying the Holy Spirit. You are right, but you are wrong. People come with their realms and the possibilities that come with those realms. Listen to me. And that means that if and when you are tired of what you are seeing and you do not like it, the Bible says, who shall ascend to the hill of the Lord? There is a hill. There is a level where you can rise to. Elijah was sitting uphill and he was able to see those who were coming. And he called down fire on them. He was sitting at an altitude. Physically, but that can also be symbolic of an altitude in the spirit. Papa Iya Deboe can just come and stand on this pulpit and just say thank you and speak and say, let me bless you. I declare that before the end of this week, you will be favored. Now he's speaking from a realm. You will say amen. It may not sound charismatic. It may not sound apostolic. Nobody falls. Nobody rises. But the nature of the spiritual provision that follows his grace will insist that that word comes to pass. Not because you believe it. For the sake of the position he represents to the body. So you see him not say, well, do you have... There are realms where you say, 
have faith, press. I'm sensing unbelief. You are stopping this thing from happening. Truly, there are dimensions where God does a thing not just for his name's sake. He does it to honor the covenant he has with the vessels. It's true. That's why you can find somebody will come under a ministry. And way before he starts learning how to tithe, he will start receiving results of a tither. Breakthrough. Open doors. And when you meet him and say you are so successful, teach me about success. It will be the worst 30 minutes of your life. He will vent ignorance from A to Z and say, why are you succeeding? He said, well, I don't know. And truly he's right. He doesn't know. And if he makes a mistake to go out of that covering, in one week, everything will dry. Because that thing will come, his results will come back to look like his true realm. Do you believe what I'm sharing with you? Yes. The animals did not want to be saved. They didn't know how to be saved. But they came under the covering of Noah's ark. It was built with food inside to sustain them. The animals would come out after the flood like heroes. But where they left alone, they would die. There are dimensions in the spirit. And there are realities. That means that if I want you to move to another dimension of results, then I must be able to guide you on the principles that will transit you from where you are to where you need to be. There are destinies that no matter how you pray and fast at that level, there are certain levels of the blessings of the Lord that may never be made manifest. Your capacity at that level will not allow God bless you. There is no need for that level of blessing at that level. Are we together? There are things you must be taught. That means every time, come, look up please. That means every time the word of God is coming to you, it's not only edifying you, listen very carefully, it's not only informing you, it's transiting you. That means a possibility exists that you came here, koinonia, at a realm. And by the time we are sharing the grace, you think because you wore the same clothes, you are the same person going out. Immediately you step out, you will find out that the reality that followed you here is not the reality that went out with you. Many of you, especially men of God, come here and you just sit for one meeting. And at the end of it, sometimes you don't even get to see me. And you are prayed for and that's it. All you need to do is go back to your church or your fellowship. And the first surprise is when you open your Bible. Ah, ah, what is this again? Then you stand to pray and it will surprise you. Let me tell you another thing that will surprise you. Your worship team members that didn't follow you will start singing and you will think this is Koinonia worship team. You took something more than you back to your meeting. Are you seeing that? Remember, you didn't call them to tell them, look, this is where I went to. This is the grace I carried. You went quietly. But the nature of that grace is like a software. It starts reprogramming everything around you to reflect the level you have now entered. All of a sudden, you find out that if you are someone who were not excellent, for instance, and you contacted that grace for excellence, you come back with it. You don't have to start teaching first. You will find out that in a span of two months, exceptionally excellent people will start coming to your platforms. They were called. There is a grace that calls them. They don't hear you because you are not yet at the level where they hear. There are ministries that no matter what branch you open, even if they open the branch close to a mosque, they must have excellent people. It's not like they bring people from the headquarters. The grace was designed to ransack the city and look for those who must make the anointing that is upon that level to walk to come. There are cities where people hardly get land for church and for certain things. But there are ministries that enter with some graces. As soon as they enter, there must be vacancy. Suddenly somebody gets visa 
and he's going abroad and he leaves his house and they demolish that house and it becomes a church the pressure that that grace puts on a territory until there are results please listen to what i'm telling you that means there is a grace you can carry that when you stand somewhere it becomes impossible for people to ignore you it's not you you have risen to a level that grace will begin to compel it will orchestrate a scenario that must bring you out no matter where you hide something must happen to the point that if god if it's a grace at that level god has mandated that at that level any time you go you must be seen and his grace must be acknowledged so you are humble and because you are in that place God, that anointing can make somebody who has no business coming there, who knows you, to come there so that he can announce you and then leave. The grace on your life. There are dimensions of favor that you can enter into. Huh? That even if it's on a Saturday night, you speak over people, they must be blessed. Even if it's Sunday during service, It's true. It's true. There are graces. Please listen to me. There are dimensions you get to in the spirit that when you make certain spiritual utterances and say God said, even if it's not God that said it, because of the realm you occupy, he will honor what you have said and rebuke you when you go back. Are we together? That means it is possible for a man of God, a prophet, to come and see. Learn this. A prophet can come and see that Shehu is supposed to be blessed October. That's what the revelation gave and is accurate. But I can come with a dimension. Listen carefully. Until a higher dimension comes, the highest grace that spoke is what works. But when a higher grace comes, I can make that October become tomorrow. I'm not a prophet. I came with a realm of intimacy and a covenant that I have with God. And I can look at him and say, my friend, um, something fell down and you gave me. Look at this. I bless you by tomorrow. And God will take what... It doesn't mean the prophet lied. It is the implication of the realm that was introduced. Believers hear this and grow. So if you don't understand, you may go back and say, fake prophet, you prophesied nonsense. No, the prophet himself, even that office is in levels. A prophet in this realm is not greater than a Christian in this realm. The realm which is a reflection of his work with God must bow. Listen, the office that that man has as powerful as it is, there is a realm of intimacy you can have with God that equals that office. You are not a prophet, but the level of dealing you have gotten with, your result is the same result a prophet will get. So when you stand side by side by, with a prophet, they will call two of you prophets. You are not a prophet. You have only transited to a realm where there is no difference between you and the result of a prophet or an apostle. These are deep mysteries in the kingdom that many people do not understand. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That's powerful. That means if you truly want to be a blessing, more than office, more than titles, seek to be transitioned to a deep dimension of work with the Holy Spirit where there are results you will command that it looks like you are getting results from every office a point will come your members will not even know who you are they said this guy is a prophet but are you really a prophet this guy is an evangelist but you are prophesying more than a prophet and you say you are an evangelist you say god told me i'm an evangelist you started as an evangelist 
your intimacy took you to the realm where only prophets should get to and took you to a realm higher than that dimension that means it is possible for a man of God you offend to curse you in anger and truly it will happen but a man of God will come who is not a prophet not an apostle not anything but in a dimension of grace he has been given the power he will nullify that thing and say it is true based on this course you should die tomorrow but I hold your hands God look at him for my sake let it go it's true I'm looking for the best way I will help you understand this thing tonight These are the dimensions that are at work in us. That certain things can happen to people because certain people are there. Are we together? Yes. All of these things you see are provisions that God put in place to ensure that the body continues to grow and that we continue to receive results. You can't believe that I've not even touched my message tonight. I just came with a hunger and a burden. Let's see what I can touch. I took the A part of what I want to share last week. Responding to the situation that we have that is widespread now. People getting frustrated as to whether the word of God produces results or not. Many of you have seen the rate of suicide and the rate of not armed robbery, not Boko Haram. These are people killing themselves now. A man leaves his family and then they are called that he died. Left a note, I'm tired of life and that's it. And young people also killing themselves. And those who are alive, it's almost as if they are dead already depression teenagers having depression young people having high blood pressure all kinds of health related issues there is an answer i attempted to answer that question last week was it or the week before last that the reason the first reason that we looked at was because of the nature and the kind of mentorship and teaching are we together? I stated that people have been taught that the value of their life is in the abundance of the physical things they get. And so by the time you find out that you are unable to get a car and a house and a child and a husband and a wife and certain things at certain levels, self-inflicted frustration begins to come. Listen carefully. And as a result, people become depressed. You hear people saying, as old as I am, I, I don't have a child, or I don't have a wife, or I don't have a husband, or I don't have my own house. Can you imagine at this age, I'm still renting? Can you imagine this and that? Can you imagine at this age, I have only three girls, no boy, you know, and all of these kinds of things. And I told us that it is because, first, the kinds of teachings, please listen carefully. The kinds of teachings that we have taught people. We have taught people that spirituality, and in many circles, sadly, that spirituality is only measured in the acquisition of physical things. Are we together? So, by the time I have, by the time I have certain things for a prolonged period of time, maybe a house, a car, and all of that, I am perceived to not be growing spiritually. Are we together? Yes. Why do you still have this car after 10 years? Why are you still living here after 20 years? So that pressure to do things, to prove that the word is working. When our, our expectations continually become disappointed, then we are plunged into that state of depression. Are we together? But then tonight's teaching also is an attempt to bring balance to it. To help us understand it is important for us to get results and i want to talk um maybe just a few minutes our time is already spent 
on the fact that I believe that many people are unable to rise to the realms. Please listen. The realms that will allow their lives reflect the faithfulness of God. Among many things, because we have not learned. Thank you. We have not learned that success is not something you pursue. Please say after me, you do not pursue success. You do not pursue greatness. There is nobody who tries to pursue success or pursue greatness, whether spiritually, financially, and otherwise, that will ever have it. It is not something you pursue. Please listen to me. It is something that you draw. It is attracted to your life on the strength of who you become. And listen to me. There are certain traits. Every blessed man, every anointed man, every influential man, everyone that has been trusted with grace and influence will tell you. Listen, there are a set of traits that individuals must possess. You call it character, you call it whatever it is. There are belief systems. Say belief systems. There are, there are mindset conditionings that you must be able to have that will allow you to transit, like I said earlier, to the realms where these things effortlessly, let me tell you this. Every time you struggle unnecessarily, to get something stop immediately did you hear what i said every time you are struggling unnecessarily to get a thing stop immediately it may be proof that you have not acquired the spiritual the psychological and the spiritual maybe sometimes the intellectual stamina to bring that thing this is rainy season no farmer would go to the farm and have to labor so much to till the ground. Why? Because part of the provision of the rainy season is a system that softens the soil. Are we together now? But if you try to till the ground by November, December, especially at this part of the country, you're going to have a hard time. So there are certain things we are trying to get. It's proof that although you are trying to reach out and it's running away from you, it's telling you something by running. That you are not yet qualified for me. So instead of running unnecessarily. Cut away. And stay back. And build the belief systems. Build the track record in the spirit. That makes for that thing. And I tell you whatever it is that left you. Will come to you and stick to you. And refuse to go. It is true for finances. It is true for ministry. It is true for leadership. It is true for the anointing. It is true for revelation. It is true for anything. I want to walk you through a few belief systems tonight. Maybe just two, three and we'll pray since our time is gone. That I believe is pivotal to our entering these new seasons that the Lord has spoken to us about. There are many of us who can sense in the spirit that I am at the edge. I am, I've exhausted my current level. Are we together now? that financially spiritually and otherwise but let me limit it to uh the things that pertain unto life the things that matter to our life our upkeep our welfare and so on and so forth because that is what is causing the depression i don't think anyone will go and kill himself just because he doesn't know god he would rather fast he would rather pray he would rather buy books but when you are unable to pay the fees of your children, when you are unable to do well, when you are unable to take care of your parents and do all of that, the accumulated frustration can push you to a point. Do you know that in all fairness, I think in the last one or two weeks, I've gotten at least one text every day. People just calling and saying, Apostle, please you have to talk to me. Otherwise, I've been sensing, I've been hearing a voice say I should kill myself. I'm good for nothing repeatedly from different regions and then i knew that this this is terrible hearing voices getting frustrated feeling my life cannot you know my life would not make sense the the latest of the suicide issues i got to hear was a man a father who had a quarrel with his wife this is a true story some of you may have heard it a man who picked a quarrel with his wife and she took out time and blasted him 
and told him how irresponsible, how shameless, how disappointed she was in him, how sad she felt that she got married to him, and told him, is it that his children were also disappointed? And the last they said was that the man went out. He just left, and that was it. They thought he was kidnapped. They thought he was killed. They didn't see him for a few days, and they thought he was just, you know, men and their anger, until police traced down and they found out that the man had died and they traced that the death was suicide now if you trace i'm not talking against church but if you trace that man will have to be associated with a group a church a fellowship or some kind of spiritual platform that means it is irresponsible for any man of god any spiritual leader to not at least respond to these things listen sociologically speaking men of god are also mind control systems men of god are also agents of transformation and much more than helping people to build their spiritual convictions we must pay attention to make sure that when there is an there is a psychological epidemic within a territory it is wise for every responsible man of God who has a sizable influence over people to contribute in making the people stay in a position that will not allow Satan to bring all of those kinds of predicaments. Are we together? Say, I need results in my life. It is true that results are not the basis of our confidence. It is true that results are not the object, not the motivation behind our pursuit of God and our walk in the faith. However, as I have said, I will continue to say again that results, among other things, are a system of consolation. Results are proof that you are adhering to spiritual laws. Results are also proof in many regards that God is with you. Not all the time, but many times. Rabbi! We know that thou art a man sent from God. How do we know? For no man can do these things. So when God is with you, there are some things, there are some evidences, attestations of his presence that must be there. And the Lord put it in my heart and I know by experience and by the privilege of mentorship from exceptionally successful people in the faith life, financially and so on and so forth that there might be a few things we may be missing as believers or other things that we need to inculcate that can transit us to the levels that we seek to have the results that will make us at ease to know and believe that God is faithful are we together so I want to share with us a few things that just take note of it we'll just take three for the sake of time and then we'll pray tonight hallelujah the first belief system that i want us to learn tonight that helps us to be great and helps us to transit well look up please is that all truly great people do not derive their confidence and their self-worth from the things that are outside them please listen all great people do not derive their self-worth from the abundance of the external things that they have. Cars, houses, certificates, achievements, as powerful as all these things are. No truly great man, especially in the kingdom, derives his self-worth from the abundance of these things. That means that when I buy a new shoe, when I buy a new cloth, then I feel more successful. When the cloth spoils, I feel less successful. That's a terrible way to live. Are we together now? The Bible, um, I think that should be, I hope it's, uh, what scripture now? Is it Luke chapter 12? It just came to my spirit. Let's look at it. Luke chapter 12, I believe it is. Jesus was teaching Luke chapter 12. Yes, and verse 15. Give it to us, please, quickly. Luke chapter 12 and verse 15. Everyone, please look up. It's projected. Here's what the Bible says. Jesus is teaching now. And he said unto them, Take heed and beware of what? Covetousness. Greed. Greed. That's the word there. Greed. It says, For a man's life consisted not in the abundance of what? 
things which he possesses. That means the true value of your life and my life is not in cars, is not in houses. Are we together now? So you must bring yourself to a point where even though I'm trusting God for a car, a house, I'm trusting God for um, advanced certifications, I'm trusting God to go abroad, I'm trusting God to increase membership, I'm trusting God to have children, and so on and so forth. My life cannot be, and my sense of success cannot be defined by these things. You know why? Because these things vacillate. They go up and they go down. Praise the Lord. I was sharing, I think it was with our school of ministry students yesterday. And um, it started with the leaders during the leaders meeting. Um, I traveled to one of the states and my phone just fell into mud and water and it was just gone, just gone completely. And while they were still deciding for me what other phone I would buy to replace that one, I decided to take the old phone. Remember that my old phone that you people hate so much that you've done your best to make sure I throw away? You know, I dusted the whole thing and I got it back in shape. And then when I went for the leaders meeting, I could see the body language, all the leaders. Oh, not again. You could see apostle, you've left this, you know, and all of that. And um, I used the opportunity to start sharing with them a bit of what I'm sharing with you now. Imagine that I tied my sense of self-worth to a, an exceptional phone. I will now begin to tell myself things that I think you are thinking. Ah, that means apostle's finances is going down. This one that he replaced this phone. Maybe he sold it all because he's broke. Because he's looking for something. Now remember you are not thinking that. It is a make-believe that has come as a result of my tying my self-worth to phones. There are people who cannot leave their homes until they borrow certain things and wear. There are people who cannot because they have created perceptions. There are men of God and women of God who cannot be themselves. More than half of their life is not them. It's a dangerous way to live. Listen very carefully. I show you a quick way to suicide. Tie your self-worth to things. And sooner or later you'll find out that you will need a knife, you will need a hoe, a cutlass, or a rope to kill yourself because of disappointed expectations. There are people who have tied their self-worth to the quality and the wealth of the kinds of families they have come from. So they will deny their parents because your mother is somewhere, maybe roasting corn or selling something by the road. And the impression that you have given people is that you are an exceptional Harvard-type young man who most likely has spent a major part of his life abroad. And now they need to see your mother or your father. And based on your belief system, you think that looking at her and her state will will be a disadvantage to the perception you are proposing so you will call your mother your auntie say just one of our relatives that just came to stay with us it's, i mean even me i'm surprised now seeing her outside you think what i'm saying is silly except for the fact that it is true how many people will never be proud of even their homes where they live your family house yes i know that they use mud to build it but the mud is not inside your mind but simply because you don't want we have a slang that our generation called this call it falling your hand correct how will i take these people in my department my departmental people want to greet my parents how will i now take them to a house that is smelling the the humidity even inside the house the carpet i mean everything there are roaches flying around i don't want to be associated with that less the person who wants to marry me who has been perceiving that i'm a lady who was born inside an airplane may now have to make up his mind and change his perception let me advise you and let me encourage you i have a responsibility over you listen to me if you tie your self-worth to anything outside you get set for a shock in this life hallelujah god forbid but if any of my vehicles have break down and it's time for me to come for koinonia i would stop a bike outside quickly and say mr man please take me i'm late 
and, and you know, members can rob this. They'll say, my apostle, the servant of the living God. You know, they, they will rob it in and make you say, bike, stop. Stop. Let me just go back home. Tell them I'm not around. If you need things to validate who you are, you are in trouble. Because you will never have enough things. That's why we seek to change phones. Listen, let your motivation be a sincere desire to transit to a more effective version of yourself. Not that it is in the acquisition of these things. That's why we are disappointed. Now I bought the phone. Now I, I got the new hair. Now I got the clothes. I got the designers. I expected you to notice it and commend me and you ignored me. So frustration starts. Are we together now? Did you not notice my perfume? Have you not noticed that I've changed perfume? What is my business? I'm thinking about my own destiny somewhere. Did you not notice I changed a car? Did you not notice I moved to a house? Have you not noticed that levels have changed? I will never tie anything, my self-worth to anything. No matter how great they are, I tell you the truth, they are mundane things. This teaching may not be popular, but it's the way of peace. It's not teaching you to be a mediocre. It's giving you rest. Rest. You've heard me say it again. Anything that is what's taking my life on, I put it inside me. God. Holy Spirit. Quality information. Anything that is too big to enter inside me is not worth my attention. People's vehicles spoiled and they, they were too embarrassed to go to work. Why? Because they say, ah, Ogasi or your car spoiled. My self-worth and your self-worth must be a derivative of who you are in Christ and what he has done and what you now possess. So the first thing I'm advising you and listen to me Koinonia, I have a responsibility over you and over those who are following. The mainstream mindset is to receive an applause because of things. You bought a new watch. How much is this watch? 300,000. Wow. You are wearing a 300,000 watch. That's somebody's salary for one year. You are not a small man no, and you enjoy it foolishly not knowing that that watch can be stolen it it can spoil it can leave you god can instruct you to sew it many things can happen around that watch why will you tie your self-worth and then you find out that you are no longer with the watch. And then you are just looking. Someone may be noticing that I'm not wearing the watch. Uh, well, let me just explain. God asked me, to, who asked you? The, nobody is thinking about you. As they are looking at you, they are thinking about their problems. Ah, where will I call my mother now? Oh God, let someone send me 400 naira recharge card. And you are there in a make-believe of your own manufacture. Say, I reject bondage. Shout it, I reject bondage. Ah, you used to, you used to wear a hair of 10,000 before. What happened? I noticed you have started wearing the one of 115 and 2. Is everything all right with your finance? What is your business? Does the 150 not stay? Oh, please. I noticed you used to bab every two weeks, but in the last one week, I'm just a concerned brother. It's like a, you, it's like you don't have money. If you don't have money, use bab. Just, just clean it. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine for God's sake. Don't be under pressure and say, I must do this. I must be this. If you come to my house and meet me drinking Gary, I will only put it in a better cup if I honor you. But Gary, you must drink. I will not borrow money to buy minerals because of you. No. Listen to me. Be healed of this societal pressure 
And let me tell all family people in Kononia, please hear me. Let nobody put pressure on you. Whether a minister, whether a leader, it should not be had in this ministry. That because anybody came to visit, they put pressure on you, you must fry plantain, fry chips. If you have it, praise God. If you don't, even if you don't have anything, put cold water in the fridge and serve. Do not derive self-worth. Don't expect people to treat you unusually just because you bought a new car. Just because you bought a new house. Um, just to let you know that levels have changed. Um, I got a job with NMPC and for starters, they gave me 1.5. And uh, because of that, I want to see Apostle. I don't have the time to join the queue. Can you please fast track the thing? I have a seed and the seed is a sizable one. What do you think I am? That's why it's good for a man of God to be blessed. Because when you are blessed, you are not looking at anybody's envelope and checking the size. No. No, we know man after the flesh. Please listen very carefully. Say in the name of Jesus, my confidence and my self-worth will never be on external things. It will be on who I am in Christ. And what Jesus has done in my life. So be proud of yourself and be proud of your level. If it's only one shoe you have, wear it every Friday. Wear it every Sunday. Let us see it as a testament. So that the day God blesses you, anybody who says it was a mistake, you will not be the one to answer. I'll say I was a witness. I saw that one shoe for two years while he was walking the world. Are we together? Sisters, don't let any brother come to you in the abundance of substance or things. Just to toy around with your mind and toy around with your life. Say, you know, I'm this and that and that. My father is a governor of which state? What is your surname? Are the states in Nigeria many that we don't know? My father is a this. My father is a king. My mother is a this. I'm a prince. As you see, I'm just a humble one. No. Whether you are a prince or not, that's not anybody's business. People should honor you because of genuine character. That you are a man of character. That you are a woman of character. is a nobler reason for honor than things. Number two. Ready? Koinonia <laughs> is growing. Praise the Lord. You must conquer greed. Write it down. The one cancer behind the, the restraint of God to bless many people. Greed. 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 You know, most people think rich people are the ones who are greedy. I tell you this sincerely. The reason why many poor people, poor Christians especially, who have an advantage of the Holy Spirit. If you have an advantage of the Holy Spirit and he's watching you poor, there's something you are doing to him. He is there as the advantage in your life. Greed. Many believers are greedy. It's shown in their givings. You started giving 10 naira as a student, as offering. And now you are director. You are giving 20 naira. Is that the measure of the lifting of God upon your life? No. Greed. Closely related to greed, please write. Selfishness. A selfish generation will never become an impactful generation. Please listen very carefully. Jesus Christ is speaking to us. A selfish generation will never become an impactful generation. What is selfishness? Look at this. Come, doctor. Selfishness and self-centeredness is when you desire something so bad, you do not care what effect it creates on others. Selfishness is not desiring good things. It is desiring good things to the point that you do not care what it does to others. 
That means that I so want to get to this speaker. I don't care if I match and I match and I put Dr. Emeka. I just want to reach there. There are many of us who are like that. Many Nigerians are like that. And I'm cautioning you because it's a spirit everywhere. It's like nobody cares about the effect of what they are, they are wanting to rise causes for others. I want to be a CEO. I will kill anybody if possible to be that CEO. Me, myself. The language of our generation is what is in it for me. Once there is nothing in it for you, it's not your business. No. It's not the language of great people. Great leaders, great leaders are selfless people. Great people are selfless people. The Bible says, looking up to Jesus. Jesus did not come to the earth to pursue an agenda of himself. Please listen to me. I've taught us that it is about us, but not all about us. When your life becomes all about you, then you are in trouble. This ministry was founded upon selflessness. Truly, selflessness. Many of you, as you are now, God is helping you, but you want to so grow and rise. There is none of our children here that is going to school because of your school fees. You are waiting till the day you become a millionaire. Some of them, their school fees is 2,000, 3,000, 10,000. You are so engrossed. You can package 100,000 and bring. Let me lay hands on you to climb the ladder fast. But a little child can come and hug you and say, Uncle, I'm not going to school. Let me die. Am I, your, am I your, your father? You see that? Selflessness. Selflessness. The selfishness in our world is so terrible. So terrible. People will do anything and not mind. They will, they will hit your car on the road because they want to hurry up. Break your, your, your what they call it, your side mirror and just hold you and say, sorry, I see that's the solution to it. I'm in a hurry. To where? How about many of us here? You don't care if your siblings rise. Listen, you are not called to carry everybody's load in your life. But you are called to at least pay attention to the effect of what your rising is creating. You can't ignore everybody and your whole world is about you. Ladies, listen to me. Because you are the ones that are most hit with this mindset. It is always about me. My money is for me. My everything is for me. Someone can give you 2,000 naira recharge card as a seed. You will flash him to call you so you will say thank you. What do we call that? Greed and selfishness. Listen. Listen to me. Many of our parents today, many of our parents, respectfully speaking and with due honor to our elderly people here, many of our parents, this is what closed their door. They were so willing to succeed that they kicked every destiny helper out. And when they got to a place where they needed help, there was nobody to help them now. When they were in the civil service, some of them got to the echelon of their, their pursuit. They never raised anybody. All they were concerned about is me. I must sit down and eat. And now they've retired. No young person can come and say, Sir, in 1995, it was because of you I got a job. Today I've come with a seed to say thank you. Let me tell you, sincerely speaking, many of us here are young people, but let me tell you, if you are old and nobody sees the need to take care of you and to say thank you, it's a sign that you spent your life in selfishness and greed. Are we together? Last year during my birthday, the greatest gift that was given to me was a letter by my little children. They write me letters all the time. They write all kinds of things, but I love their letters and I read every one of it. They draw love, they write Jesus on it, they try to draw my face, they write, you have been a nice daddy, 
thank you. Those things mean a lot to me than chicken, than whatever it is. You eat those things and go to the toilet and it's all. But those things are a reflection. It's a sign that when you are old, those ones, they can come to you and say, make sure this person never cries, even in old age. You say, but he's not your father. He say, he was better than my father. If nobody can remember you for good, it's a sign that you are digging the grave already, even while you are alive. Please hear me. Great people are not great because they are pursuing all they want. It's not all about you. Everything God gives you, people should rejoice with you because they know that by the grace of God and with all humility, even if it's the crumbs from the table, it will reach them. I look at us, please look at me. I can tell you why God has not answered your prayer of financial prosperity. He has discerned the extent of greed. That in your being blessed, nobody, nobody. Many of us are so greedy and selfish that anytime you are blessing somebody, they know that you are looking for something. Whether you are looking for a life partner or you are looking for a destiny helper or you are looking for, for something, it is not you to give. I think if I stop giving, it may affect me. I may even fall down and die. But you know, Apostle, we are not very blessed. It's you people that God has helped. That is the talk of a greedy person. If you can't give clothes, there is food. One day you can make up your mind to cook two pots of food and call somebody and say, I may not do much now, but I am breaking the spirit of greed. Please come and eat in my house. They come the next day and say, no, no, no. I was only training myself. Don't come every day. Don't be ashamed of saying it because human beings will always take you for granted. You do it once and pursue them and don't feel bad. Tell them, please, at training, I will, when, when I get to that realm, you will come. But for now, come and eat. Are we together? Say in the name of Jesus, the spirit of greed, the spirit of selfishness, I curse it from my life. Many believers are like that. Two women or two men can be talking. I can be talking with Dr. Emeka and in his presence, I will bring out 2,000 naira, buy egg roll and minerals and hold it while we are talking and finish it and eat the egg roll and squeeze the leather and match it. Papa! It's inhuman to live like that. Giving is living. You must trust God for grace. Don't wait till you are a millionaire. I'm telling you, listen, this, these are belief systems that will make your life exceptional. God will never trust a greedy and a selfish person. When he sends a word to Jacob, it's because Jacob can let that word reach Israel. If God gives you money, can God look at many people in Koinonia today and say, instead of blessing five people and giving them school fees, I know they are coming, but can I bless you? And then they rejoice. The angels rejoice and say, these children have gone to school. Why? Because one person was blessed. What does it take for God to give you a job? What does it take for God to turn the economic tide in your life? It takes more than studying business. Let me tell you, it takes more than we've taught you a lot and you know that there are astute business people in this place. We're not just men of God. We're not daft people. We're economically sound. We're financially sound. But I tell you this, much more than just the value you give, who you are is higher than what you do. I had a conversation of recent with a very wealthy man, such a rare privilege, and I met him. And I asked him one question. I said, sir, let me ask you one question. I said, what kind of people will you be looking for at this level? And he looked at me and smiled and said, Apostle, you are very smart. I said, thank you, sir. My mind was just on the answer. And he said, should I tell you honesty? He said, yes. And then he kept quiet and took a deep breath. 
he said i will answer you in a story and then he told me a story and at the end of it he said let me test i already told you you're intelligent what kind of people do you think i'll be needing i said trustworthy people he said that's it the morale of the story he gave me was that he would pay any amount to have people who are selfless enough he said every storekeeper and every foreman he employed cheated him and 95 percent of them were christians recommended by pastors he sincerely told me that the non-believers who have handled that branch of his business have been more honest than even the people because of greed 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 let them know that the word is working so you steal everything you steal cement you steal everything and sell it and quietly cover it up do you not know that when truth was buried it came out of the grave hallelujah there are very very listen let me teach you this if you are a businessman here please more than value and productivity look for selfless people when you find selfless people you have not found cheap people you have found priceless people our generation is full of everybody who is looking for everything for myself let me quickly cash in on the moment while i have the time some of you looking at me now as born again as you are let me keep you in a room with plenty money scattered if i count it you will behave because it's counted but let me just scatter it and leave you you will first check whether there's a cctv look around and pray in tongues so that those outside would think there's prayer going on and you just bend as if you are sweeping and carry one and put in your pocket who do you think is watching god alone demons angels the demons that will oppress you and you will shout in the name of jesus <laughs> are you joking please i pray for you in the name of jesus that the grace to be selfless may that grace come upon you there are nurses that are not selfless is that not so in your hospital there are doctors that are not selfless a woman comes, she wants to give birth, and they're acting as if, please, madam, if you would die, say, just die there. Whereas that woman has been trusting God for a child for 12 years. And you see the greed and the selflessness. Are you from my tribe? Are you from my place? Are you from here? No. Selflessness. I, these are the things I pray for for myself. These are the things that have brought blessings to my life that you show god i told you that the lord told me if you will let men see me there is nothing i will not give you there are many of you that desire anointing apostle anoint me and i look at you it's not even god even me i know the things you will do if that anointing really comes yeah. you will first run to your enemies and say you are finished you don't know what i'm carrying just know it's over and if you think i'm joking you you will die tomorrow you you will die on thursday by the time you kill people in a row in one week you say what this grace is powerful even me i didn't know it's this powerful listen to my message can god trust you go and listen to it please media let our family online and in diaspora listen to that message can god trust you powerful message many times it is not just in the fasting and the prayer as powerful as it is is positioning yourself god let me be your treasurer on earth the last treasurer betrayed you here is a faithful one and god is saying can i trust you say yes trust me god gives you five hundred thousand. your spirit is still sound your head is still sound and he sees how you bless people you say you did this for me let me take it to another level whereas all your prayer from your small mind is god give me five million 
oh god give me five five million will change my life based on what your mind told you whereas he's thinking of giving you gold as dust and giving you the keys to the hearts of nations lord give me the grace to prophesy as soon as god gives you that grace you just say i found my stream of income i'm not wasting my time for anything again i will never prophesy free i it didn't it was not i got the anointing at a cost and god says you see your heart you were there fasting i warned you and now that you have the anointing and because it is valuable people will now begin to pay hundred thousand per prophecy thirty thousand per prophecy and the truth is that the grace will work and while you are paying and paying you are happy you are building houses collecting people's houses collecting people's cars and doing all of that god is watching you he's watching you because he knows one day you will exhaust that realm so you'll go back again and say lord i'm here he said, it's not me you are talking to it's not me you are talking to i gave you a grace i saw what you did with that grace lord give me the kind of apostles grace and he tests you 20 missed calls by 1 a.m you don't answer any one of them the 21st one you call and say let me tell you something i'm a human being too i sleep i this i that i hate you don't do this to me again the next time you do and god says look at the grace you want listen 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 please look at me selflessness is an unusual virtue that is the reason why not everybody has it why will you reward everybody when they have the same thing dr mike Murdoch says that our similarities create our comfort it's our difference that creates our reward hallelujah how far can you go for the sake of people how far can you go for the sake of god some of you have vehicles you've never carried anybody after service even if it's raining you horn them and say you are going and god is watching and you already say no god i'm trusting you to give me one car that i saw on my way going somewhere and god says you think i'm stupid there are some of you even if it's on a bike or a bicycle you will never help anybody may god never give you anything that you will regret yeah. did you hear what i said may god never give you anything that you will say i feel pained that i gave this man this maybe i'll stop here Let me just talk about it the third trait you must embrace is humility i have to talk about it our time is gone but spare me two three five minutes humility humility please look at me the bible says love not the world nor the things that are in this world he says if any man love the world the love of the father is not in him then it categorizes the things we can love into three the lust of the eyes the lust of the flesh number three is called the pride of life there are many people please listen to me you see ba africa hear me now i'm not just talking to zaria i'm not just talking to nigeria i'm talking to africa listen to me because of our background huh and the way we have suffered and the way people have looked down on us and some of us because of our cultural context please listen to me there is that itch to be celebrated there is that itch that urge to be perceived as great and valuable are we together and there's nothing wrong with that we call it spotlight is the slang we have for it some of you i just mentioned spotlight you're already laughing i mean you just imagine yourself there's nothing wrong with that except for the fact that pride is one thing that will make god fight a man god will not fight a man because of sin god will not fight a man even because of disobedience but pride he says that god gives opposes the proud 
and gives grace to the humble. One of the, one of the, one of the greatest justification for pride is wealth and achievement. Please listen. Wealth and achievement. Every time God warned people of pride, it had to do with wealth and achievement. Deuteronomy chapter 8. You don't have to turn there, just read. The Bible says, let it not be that when you have what? Built houses and done this, done this and that achievement that you will say, my power and the might of my hand has given me this. And then verse 18 says, But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he, it is he. Leave the remaining statement. It is he. He is the focus. Humility is not refusing what God has done. Humility is not simplicity. Humility is acknowledging God as the basis of every achievement that you have. Outspokenly in your body language and in your conversation. God, it is unto you. Apostle Joshua Selman, the great man changing people. Ah, a man can receive nothing, precious people, except it is given to him from God. It's very difficult for some of you to say this thing. Why? Because you feel if I say it, I'm taking away the spotlight from me. Pride. There are many people, there are many parents who would have been lifted, but pride, pride. They will not be good examples. Look at me. Let me tell you why some of you are finding it difficult to access the blessings of God to lift you. You are not going to be a good model being blessed. You are the best Christian model at your current state. If you rise higher than that, especially financially, you will kill people. Some of you, if you rise financially, your mother, your father, your siblings, and everybody, they will kneel down to greet you every morning. Simply because you paid rent. Simply because you paid this. I failed in life, and people I think I'm a failure. But now that I've succeeded, I will rub it on the face of everybody. No. That is the way of the world. We are kingdom people. Can you be blessed and still remain humble? Can you be blessed and still stoop down to people's levels? Can you be blessed and not disturb people with noisy of your achievement? <laughs> just, to, just to meet you and say, ah, um, um, just to let you know, are you aware that I just came back from Lagos and uh, I flew in? You came. That's the most important thing. Whether you crawled, whether you drove, whether you flew, avoid some of those, those talks. I was in the plane and ah you know i was uh, i was i don't know have you ever sat down in a business class because i'm trying to explain something i don't know if you can understand you see let me tell this is why many great people are persecuted in the church because we don't know how to keep quiet success is already loud on itself if you dare rub it in members all and sundry will get back at you and they will find a reason to get back at you let me tell you something. It is difficult to criticize a humble man, even if you are right. Humility paralyzes you. you what will you now say? Are we together? I'm saying this because we are in a very prophetic season where God is lifting many of us. Many people are not humble. They are only broke. By the time the blessings of the Lord comes, you will see the attitude, the pungency of pride. Pride is one thing that is a destroyer. Even if you kill Satan and all the demons, proud people will still die. There is nothing that gives me beauty and glory as the world shining the light on me. Then I hold the light and shine it. I'm proud to be the usher shining it to say people thank God for Joshua Selman and everything that's why you notice every time people want to celebrate me for anything I become uncomfortable when I'm preaching I can be bold I can be this if I drop this mic now and you start saying well there is a man here that thing Shade was doing you see that I felt like dying if I had my way I would just send my picture to stand and represent me but some of you you like it 
as joking as it is, some of you, as you are sitting, you are ah, let my month come. If they give me this opportunity, I will first cut the cake and leave back the knife. Let them snap me alone before everybody comes. The urge, the urge, the urge to outshine. Huh? In, in, a, in a secular business way, that's alright, but in a kingdom way, the, the urge to want to just receive vain glory. Please, you must trust God to conquer it. Conquer it. Conquer it. It's one of the big restraints that many of us may face. You know, many times I pray for you. Sincerely, I do. And I ask the Lord, I say, Lord, continue to bless and lift my people. I'm a, among the many things I get impressions of in my spirit is their tendencies. God doesn't directly say pride. Tendencies. Vulnerabilities. Things that can happen that you are not aware of. If you ever think money does not have power, think again. Did you hear what I said? Think again. Money has power. Put money in a ring with any boxer, it will beat him out before he enters. Money is powerful. Anything that can turn a man around without using sword is powerful. Anything that can relocate a man without advice is powerful money is powerful but when it begins to come with it it will solve other problems and create others hallelujah can you let jesus be seen in your life can you be lifted that 10 million naira just entered your account and you still come for koinonia and just sit down not to say if you push me if you push me if you push me please i don't have time for thieves now what happened god has blessed me you're laughing but these are the things that are enshrined in our hearts so that they will know i'm a big man so that they will know i'm rich well for your information that jeep you are seeing is my car for your information just to let you know that uh, i'll be in uk on tuesday quickly touch the u.s thursday and i'll try to make koinonia i'm still coming god is watching all those things it's not a testimony you are sharing there are many things that are not testimonies testimonies the goal of testimonies is edification not announcement edification so the part you stress in a testimony is the edification truly let me tell you something i vowed a vow to god and I say, Lord, whatever you will give me that will make me proud, I'm praying in advance, no matter how I cry, don't answer me. Don't answer me. Humility is a powerful thing. Can you have access and still be humble? Can you have increase and still stay humble? Are you hearing what I'm saying? Don't say we are like that in our family. It means all of you need to hear this message. It doesn't mean you are right just because everybody is like that. We are like that. If we have it, we show it. If we don't have it, we don't show it. But it ought not to be so. Jesus is teaching. When you come into the kingdom, you don't come with the baggages of your belief. You drop it aside and adopt the value system of the kingdom. There is nothing as powerful has been blessed and been humble your life is a message in action in action and it's amazing that many people what you call wealth is not wealth it's just a test 1.5 and people are in trouble 1.5 entered my account I have 1.5 million. Oh, well, now it has gone back to 1.4. I use 100,000. And while you are talking, you may believe you are impressing everybody. Whereas scattered among you, there are accounts that if you see, you will not wake up again. You will not wake up. I'm telling you, it's not the, you, there are some things you act like you are used to seeing. No, there are things you are not used to seeing. You will see things that you will not know what part of your body to react with. And yet, people can have those things. And be quiet Moses had the ability to prophesy from morning till night the grace of the prophetic was so much in him yet Moses was quiet 
part of his spirit was taken out they called elders who had followed him 70 people received the spirit of moses nobody could keep quiet ah but us hear the lord from morning till night and moses was watching them moses said this thing that is making you make noise times 10 of it is what was in me yet i was quiet can you have so much and be quiet can you know so much and be quiet there are people if you know so much when someone is talking once is wrong let me correct you sorry that's what i studied no, no that's my feel i won't keep quiet it is powerful to know so much there are times that i listen to people as they talk and many times what they are saying doesn't make a lot of sense spiritually and even intellectually i know a lot more than what they are saying but i honor them because they have more results than me i keep quiet and i just hear. you understand what i'm saying i say yes sir yes sir and what the man is saying is, is is quite honestly nonsense and i just keep quiet and i listen he said ah. and sometimes they are, they are flattered they are impressed because of the whole thing. just listen and say yes sir and keep quiet not sir with all due respect i don't want to talk while we're just keeping quiet but sakai this your thing is outdated no you lose many opportunities like that in the name of jesus may this ministry even with the things that god is doing bring people who are exceptionally blessed and humbled that a time will come when people will pack cars that if you want to see it you only come for koinonia and you will not even know who is who people will just be rolling rolling on the ground it's after the grace you will just see a tiny lady say let me rush home you will think she's calling a bike man and she will enter a car that was your dream that you plan to buy in 30 years and you say that's the owner i said that's the owner that lady is a ceo of something he said was she not the one rolling up and down that's a message koinonia extended extended to your life don't brag around and move around making noise i have this i have that listen when you are under pressure to keep saying things it's a sign that you have complex yourself you must be healed be strengthened when god blesses you you cannot hide light we are going to pray our time is up but we must take two or three minutes to pray more than having things these are the things you must become and your life becomes exceptional lord take away my tendencies take away my vulnerabilities take away the things that can happen to me when i rise to certain levels i desire you to take me to certain levels of blessings but lord i know that there are things that are enshrined within my heart that will will limit your workings in my life is someone praying tonight lift your voice and pray Tonight's teaching may be a hard teaching, but pray is a maker of great people. Pray. I owe everything to you, O oh God. All that I am and all that I will ever become, let it be unto you. Let the name of Jesus alone be glorified. Alone be glorified. When men see me, may they see you. May men not look at me and forget about you. May men not look at my results and ignore Jesus. That when men see my life, it will remind them of who God is. Is someone praying tonight? hallelujah the last prayer point because of our time please i want you to pray this with all your heart pray and say lord don't restrain your hand from me i am trustworthy you can trust me with the wealth of the kingdom you can trust me with access you can trust me with influence i will not bring your name i will not bring reproach to your name through the pungency of pride that will come out i will let men know no matter how you lift me i will let men know that jesus is the reason for who and what i am unashamedly consistently 
intentionally but lord do not withhold your hand of blessings in this season you are lifting men lift me do not withhold new wines from coming upon my life pray for yourself pray for koinonia let it please you oh god to trust me with everything you are pouring in this season wisdom grace lifting anointings access everything i receive it in the name of jesus hallelujah praise the lord in one minute please hold the hands of somebody close to you we are going to pray for koinonia as a ministry lord as you lift us you are giving us a voice across this nation you are giving us a voice many of you have seen the mighty things that god is doing in and through this ministry god has made our song a praise to the nations and god has so exalted himself i like you to pray pray and say lord as you lift us we declare that never will there come a time in this ministry where men will see your walkings and forget about jesus lift your voice you love this ministry pray pray online continue the lifting oh god let the teachings continue to transform men let it enter the hands of people we declare it's a vow and a covenant that jesus and him alone will be glorified as you announce us as you lift us as you honor us in the name of jesus we decree and declare pray for everyone connected to this ministry pray for every business pray for every career pray for every achievement and every achiever pray for every business person pray for every ministry connected to this ministry pray for our children father we declare that in this season that you are announcing and lifting men jesus alone will be glorified hallelujah i pray for you that the things that i share tonight will mean a lot to you if it is lifting in the kingdom you truly desire please when these messages are uploaded get them again and sit down don't say they are simple these are the weightier matters of the kingdom you settle down and listen and pray personally this prayer point you should go back to your secret place and develop it and cry and say lord help me i have defaulted in this area and that area it may be why you're outstretched and you started but something restrained your hand now i know it's not just demons let the heavens be open pour out increase pour out influence i told god as far as my life is concerned please don't have any fear blessing me don't have any restraint blessing me because for as long as i'm alive breathing i will ensure that in and through my life that jesus is glorified you must adopt that you come from families that like to know who is doing what so that you earn respect you must kill that spirit don't say i'm yoruba don't say i'm Igbo. don't say i'm south south don't say i'm hausa don't say i'm middle belt throw away those things and say i'm a citizen of the kingdom and i must subscribe to the way that kingdom people behave they say this is what you should do but i say this is jesus teaching they say this is what you should do but i say this is the way father i stand representing this ministry and representing the things that you are doing even in this nation and around the world i know that in this season you are truly looking for men you can trust and lord you have put it in my heart as a burden to teach your people the spiritual traits that we must inculcate that position us to be lifted in our places of work in ministry in business in career and even in destiny i have shared some of these truths with your people and i cry by the god of heaven that you will cause this word to be effectual in our hearts whatever it is that our lives have projected 
that have made you restrain your hand of blessing, your hand of lifting, your hand of honor. We pray tonight by the mercies of the God of heaven, let your hand be outstretched once again to lift, to bless, to anoint, and to take us to realms unimagined. In the name of Jesus, I pray specifically over the issue of finances. We're in a season where so many people need the hand of God in this area. I've told you it's a cost to chase money, look for money. It will distract you and take away useful time from your life. I pray that any of these things that you have assumed in your heart that will make God to restrain his hand to bless you or bless your family by the mercies of the God of heaven, may mercy be shown you this night. In the name of Jesus. And I pray for you sincerely and truthfully. May you step into blessings and into realms you never even imagined you would step into. May you step into anointings. May you step into access. May you step into honor. May you step into influence. May you step into open doors. In the name of Jesus Christ. I really want to encourage you to pay attention to all the teachings. Every koinonia service for you should be a moment of lifting, a moment of rising. We have covenanted with God to not waste the time of anyone at all, whoever finds his way to this place. This is not a museum. This is not a, a film, a cinema center. This is a place for encounter. So when you come, you must have that expectation that God will truly change you. doesn't matter which of the services. It's my personal commitment to God and to you to make sure that every single service becomes worthwhile. Many people, you know, you really have to understand the sacrifices that people go through. And then you will know that it is only godly to ensure that people really encounter God for real. Are we together? Acts chapter 20. I will continue to draw this scripture. And um, let's start with this tonight. What I have to teach tonight is very powerful. Acts chapter 20 and verse 32. Can you read? If you can see it, please read. One to read. And now, brethren, uh huh. I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among them which are sanctified. You can be among those who are sanctified, but not built and without any evidence of your inheritance. The Bible says that a man can be commended first to God and then to the word in this case he calls it the word of his grace the word of his grace being the word that is able to provide and make manifest in your life all the multifaceted possibilities that are resident in the christ the bible says the word of his grace can achieve two things in your life the word of his grace that is able to number one build you up everybody say build you up and then number two, to deliver to you. Now, notice how the word of God, I really want you to understand this scripture. Notice how the word of God works. It does not start by giving you an inheritance. It starts by working on you. So that when you sustain that capacity, then there is nothing God is unable to give you. <laughs> Many times, we desire things, physically and spiritually, that we do not have the spiritual psychological and physical stamina to receive are we together now yes this this podium is resting on a casted ground it has the ability to take the weight of this so there's no trouble your seat was designed with your weight in mind are we together now so your sitting on that seat is not a threat at all it is able to take you but you cannot carry this speaker for instance and drop it on certain seats it will break so the bible says that the word of god scans your life and looks at the magnitude of spiritual inheritance to be given to you and then it starts by building you 
until you rise to that level in the spirit where no weight of spiritual substance on you can break you then it delivers to you are we together now so this is already a word of encouragement so that if nothing is being delivered to you as it were you are not discouraged because you know that it means capacity is being built are we together many times services like this are not just times of receiving things it may be times of building it is not always that something is just given like you receive something a substance many of us just want something we can receive and run with if it is god he gives gifts according to his riches there is nothing god gives a man that is small and so when god delays in giving you it is because he's allowing your capacity to be able to retain are we together yes very powerful it is not enough to receive you must sustain an ability to retain because you can lose something that God gives you the Bible is full of things that were once given to men and taken back so God is able to take advantage of his word to build me and build you and then when we gain that stature in the spirit then deliver to us an inheritance among them that are sanctified let your word come and bless us oh god in the name of jesus let me encourage you again i say this to you from the depth of my heart and i say this to you in all truthfulness and i say this to you with all audacity if you listen to the truths that i teach you you will never fail it's true leave your situation and the pride around it don't mind it focus on the truth you are listening to and see how forcible right words are the bible says how forcible there is a force that right words when you receive it can exert on your situation until it bends and glorifies the lord so tonight please take your eyes away from what you are trusting god to do or what has not been done just focus on the word the worst spirit in my opinion demonic spirit now is not death death is just the last enemy not the worst the worst spirit is not the spirit of infirmity that causes sicknesses now the worst spirit listen carefully is not even demonic attack dreaming of somebody chasing you up and down the worst spirit is the spirit that can cause blindness in your understanding the bible says it is able to make even the word of god unfruitful that the god of this world has an assignment to create a system of blindness over the minds of the people so that they are not open to the glorious gospel it is the worst state a man can be in not sickness not failure not poverty none of these things in themselves destroy it is our attitude around them that empowers them to destroy us but blindness whether you do something about it or not it will destroy you blindness every time jesus saw blind people he was very he was intentional about their healing blind people are mad people these two categories anything that affects your eyes and your mind is truly demonic are we together there are people doing exploits in the world today without hands there are people doing exploits today without the ability to speak there are people who do not have limbs and are doing all sorts of things but you will seldom find a madman do anything that is impactful there are people who can even you know just rise above the limitations of blindness but you look at their lives and you know that it is not easy when god opens your eyes and opens your mind is a true miracle are we together now i was sharing i can't remember where now um, 
I think it was one of the departments, I do not know that I was having a meeting with them and then I was sharing with them how that a man is not truly delivered until he receives grace that gives him passion for the word. Any man that rejects the word is oppressed. Even if he does not see any spirit in his life. You don't have to have a dream of a demon chasing you. The moment there is a resentment for the wisdom of the word, it is it a sign that your life is acutely under an attack. Are we together? Blessed be the name of the Lord. And so as the word of God comes, please, I, I challenge you to open up your heart. See it as the word of his grace that is coming to you regardless of what the limitations are pay attention to the word they looked unto him and they were not ashamed their faces were lightened looking at your situation will not change anything but if you look to the word the word has a force that the anointing follows the word not a man the anointing looks like it is following a man because that man is following the word are we together now the anointing does not follow men. The anointing follows the word. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Be fruitful. Write it down. That's our topic for tonight. Be fruitful. If I were you, I would say amen. amen. Hmm. Open our eyes in the name of Jesus. Let the word of God change us. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26. We're reading to 28. The Lord declared this year by His Spirit, that is a year of extraordinary fruitfulness. And my assignment is to guide us by the Spirit on the principles allocated um, for our fruitfulness, our productivity, and our efficiency in the kingdom. And tonight, we're dealing with something very, very important. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26. And Elohim said, Let us make man. So, man is the subject here after our in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea the fowl of the air the cattle over the earth and every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth 27 so god created man in his own image in the image of god created him male and female created he them 28 and god blessed them and God blessed them. The Bible didn't say, and God discussed or he said to them. Please listen. And God blessed them and said unto them. Some other versions say, and God blessed them, saying. So he routed the blessing through words. But the blessing are not words. The vehicle for communicating them is just a word. He can choose to use any other mechanism. Remember, he's God. And God blessed them and said to them, first instruction, be fruitful and multiply, not or multiply, be fruitful. That means fruitfulness is not the same as multiplication. Are we together? When the Bible says something or something, it means either of the two holds the same value. But now he's saying be fruitful. Then in addition to fruitfulness, multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it. Then it says have dominion, etc., etc. So tonight we are picking one, be fruitful. And we want the Lord to open our eyes and to understand God's idea of fruitfulness. Colossians chapter 1 verse 9 and 10. Praise the Lord. Colossians chapter 1 verse 9 and 10 for this cause we also paul is speaking since the day we heard of it do not cease to pray for you and to desire that ye be filled with the knowledge of his will and in all wisdom and spiritual understanding verse 10 that ye might walk worthy of the lord unto all pleasing being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God being fruitful not in some in every good work hallelujah so we see from scripture that fruitfulness is a command 
fruitfulness is a command in fact jesus demonstrated in his own earth work how much he resented on fruitfulness once upon a time the bible tells us that jesus was on his way back and he saw a fig tree and that the tree had green leaves in other words it was attracting his attention but coming to the tree he discovered that there were no figs and jesus not a prophet that is still being renewed not an apostle in the making jesus himself looked at the tree and cursed the tree and said that no fruit will come out of you again and by the next day they came and discovered that it had withered right from the root so god is passionate about fruitfulness are we together please write this down to be fruitful means to increase to increase to be fruitful means to be productive fruitfulness entails increase fruitfulness entails productivity fruitfulness entails enlargement and expansion are we together fruitfulness entails evidence evidence you are fruitful to the degree to which your life can produce evidence what evidence evidence of the faithfulness of god evidence of the investment of god upon your life evidence of the supremacy of the word in your life why do we need to be fruitful it's important we know let me just address that because we have a lot to deal with why do i need to be fruitful because you know there are christian circles today well-meaning that think subjects like this should not be the believers should not be bothered with the subject of fruitfulness why because most times when we talk of fruitfulness all they think about is money and physical things they just look at fruitfulness um, in terms of affluence physical and material blessings and then they convince themselves that anyone can live without them and then they assume that all those things are distracting but the bible says we need to be fruitful in every good work every good work every good work are we together why do we need to be fruitful john chapter 15 and verse 8 we'll still make reference to that scripture but please go with me very quickly to john 15. i pray that god opens your eyes to understand this once and for all mm. verse 8 herein is my father glorified when you bear much fruit how is the father glorified when you bear much fruit when you bear much fruit when a man pays the school fees of his son and the son returns back with a report card and says daddy out of 90 students i took number one and my average is 91 i am doing well that child is fruitful that child justifies the investment of the school fees are we together but on the flip side if the child returns back with a report card and is written there need to see the parent and zero from top to bottom is that child fruitful no the the father is angry for many reasons one he's angry because he's the father are we together just being the father alone is enough to upset him the owner of this child that is carrying this shape are we together two because his resources a symbol of his energy was committed into that boy's life so the bible says the father is glorified when we justify his giving us the holy spirit when we justify his giving us his wisdom his favor remember our scripture here that has become an anthem when god makes all grace to abound towards you he expects fruitfulness in other words he in his mind he does not see that there should be an excuse in your life because all grace has been well coordinated towards you if you're with me say amen, amen. the father is glorified when the saints bear fruit all kinds of fruits number two bearing fruit 
also inspire and encourage you most people do not know that when they bear fruit their, their own spiritual lives also continue to grow spiritual barrenness is very dangerous and barrenness in every regard is dangerous biologically speaking when people experience any kind of barrenness it's not something that is received with gladness it's something that challenges them can even destroy their marriage so we know for sure that any form of barrenness calls for action are we together now yes hearing is my father glorified but then god gives you consolations that my life is producing fruits producing fruits producing fruits the third reason why we need to bear fruits is because our fruitfulness is a message to the world that god is true our fruitfulness is a witness that can cause men to believe in god very important john chapter one please and verse six john chapter one john chapter one and verse six our fruitfulness there was a man sent from god the bible says whose name was john seven the bible says he the same came for a witness what was his assignment to bear witness of the light that through his witness all men might believe so when you are fruitful through your witness men might believe god is depending on men to believe in him but their faith is routed through your results are we together now that means that there is a dimension of my result and your result that has the capability has the ability to make men believe god if it is true that we are passionate about seeing his glory revealed then we must truly desire to be fruitful to the end that men look at our lives the last verse galatians 1 yes 24 and they glorified god in me galatians 1 24 and they glorified god not just through me in me and they glorified god not they glorified me and they glorified god in me are we together gentiles need to see the light the results the evidences of god's hand upon our lives let me tell you something my brothers and my sisters results are a language it is true when you bear fruit even fruit that abides it is a language that speaks to creation about the faithfulness of god it is a language that attracts creation to the one true god the source of all lifting so god is passionate about our bearing fruit mighty god settle it once and for all that god is glorified in my fruitfulness settle it once and for all that god is glorified in my fruitfulness when i am fruitful when i am productive when my life begins to produce evidences that god is glorified let me tell you something about fruitfulness you can say the same thing without fruit and say the same thing with fruit and the impact will be east and west fruitfulness makes your words heavy when you have results your words are worth believing the words of a fruitful man are seldom contended with when people speak from a standpoint of results there is a compelling conviction that it brings to you and so if we want creation to subscribe to this life that we so propose day and night telling them jesus is the way the truth and the life telling them that he is the one who can lift men god is counting on our lives to be able to produce that message and in the name of jesus he will find he will find a real witness in you yeah. be fruitful is a command in the loins of prophecy when god was looking at adam and prophesying he saw joshua selman he saw koinonia and he said be fruitful in other words i forbid barrenness i forbid barrenness i forbid barrenness in your life be fruitful
But like every other mystery in the kingdom, there are, there are, we are mandated to understand the spiritual systems, like I've always taught you, uh, that our results depend upon. I've taught you again that between your desire and the manifestation, there are spiritual systems that connect them. Are we together? I've told you the prophetic speakings of God, that when God speaks, he does not speak as though he's talking to a man. He speaks as if he's talking to himself. And so some factors will not be captured in his speakings. It will take the spirit of revelation to break what God has said down so that you now see how you connect to that word. God can look at you and say, where is the house? And you are sitting down wondering and say, God, who are you talking to? And then he says, I'm talking to myself. You see that? It is the spirit of revelation that will break that down so that you begin to understand that God does not speak like men. Knowing how God speaks is very powerful and it is a spirit of revelation that can help you and help you understand the communications of God. Are you with me tonight? Yes. So there are mysteries, secrets, principles you can call them allocated for fruitfulness. Wishing fruitfulness is a waste of time. Just having a strong desire for fruitfulness is a waste of time. It may be beneficial for a while because at least it can draw you to the secret place where you create the atmosphere for the spirit of revelation. According to Proverbs 18 and verse 1, it says, Desire through desire, a man having separated himself, it says he seeketh and intermediate with all wisdom. But that in itself does not make you fruitful. There is a lot of superstition in the body of Christ. Ask the average Christian, do you believe in results, fruitfulness, productivity? He or she will say yes. And then you ask them, how is it going to happen? Then you will hear the variety of ignorance expressed through many well-meaning words. But the bottom line is, I don't know. Some will say Jesus will do it. And it looks very right just because the name of Jesus is in part of that that erroneous statement jesus would do it others would say i will work hard i will do my best we are called to walk circumspectly everybody says circumspectly i told you that in a man's dealings with god creativity is almost not needed it is obedience it is when it has to do with dominion and kingdom legislature that is where your creativity comes the principles that make for your greatness are not left for your guessing they are there listen please when you get this you will stop wasting your time trying to crack your brain to know god trying to crack your brain to get truth no truth is not an idea it's not just the function of the mind you don't reason truth it is revealed there is a body of knowledge allocated for your results are you getting what i'm saying now yes if i have this bottle of water it's already there my assignment is to find it not to try to look for a way of 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 refining water and all of that and and and, and purifying it no it's already there this is how truth is don't think that truth is like many ideas that you crack your brain to just download no it is given and received otherwise it is not there if it is truth then it is not subject to the ideas of men it's something that comes from god if you get this you will be restful your assignment is to create the atmosphere for that truth to come lord what are the keys towards my fruitfulness and you remain there waiting like a waiter and the spirit of revelation comes and when it comes upon you the secret is revealed he says then the secret was revealed unto daniel listen every truth in the kingdom is revealed 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 every truth in the kingdom is revealed if it is truth then it was revealed whether the custodian of that truth admits that it was revealed or not the bottom line is that it was revealed so all of the spiritual activities that you go through for truth to come 
is only preparing the atmosphere for truth to come if the spirit of revelation does not bring you truth my brother and my sister you will end up conjuring sophia human wisdom ideas that cannot stand the test of time you can think ideas you can read books here and there and connect things but truth is revealed are we together And the Lord showed me something very powerful. And that's what I want to share with us. The mystery of fruitfulness is enshrined in a very silent parable that I want us to deal with right now. Hmm. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Luke chapter 8. Mighty God, open our eyes and help us see wherever we stop tonight we'll pray luke chapter 8 we're reading the first 15 verses look at this we call it the parable of the sower it's not the parable of the sower it's a kingdom mystery hidden in a story and kept only to be revealed by the spirit of revelation just because you read this does not mean you will have an understanding now you can give a theological explanation as to what you think was happening you can even write a book about it but my brothers and my sisters, this is sealed. Until it is open, you will never see what is there. Are we ready now? So let's read. It came to pass afterwards that he went throughout every city and village, Jesus now, preaching and showing the glad tidings of the kingdom of God. And the twelve were with him. Verse 2. And certain women which had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities, Mary, all of that, together they went with him. Verse 3. Um, okay, so, you know, the Bible is just giving us the setting now of all of this. I think it starts from verse 4. And when much people were gathered together and were come to him out of every city, he spake, but he spake by a parable. He communicated, but he used a parable to hide the secret. What is the parable? Verse 5. A sower. A sower went out to sow his seed follow the story a sower no name he went out to sow his seed so whoever this sower is we know that the sower was desiring fruitfulness are we together nobody just goes to sow seeds just because he feels like throwing seeds so one the sower had seeds number two the sower was a sower are you getting what i'm saying now listen a sower went out to sow his seed and as he sowed it's amazing that everything that happened by the wayside and the rest was called sowing it was not a mistake as he sowed some fell by the wayside listen and it was trodden down and the fowls of the air devoured it two some fell on a rock and as soon as it was sprung up it withered away because it lacked moisture and some fell among thorns and the thorns sprang up with it and choked it and other fell on good ground so we know that they didn't just fall that falling is sowing because even on the good ground it uses the same word so it's not like the seed maybe a bag with holes and then it fell until it got to the good ground no he sowed there is a soil called the wayside and he sowed there and he watched what happened now the first thing we have to be thankful for is that god did not hide the failures of this sower otherwise we would have been deceived about fruitfulness the bible gives us the complete story of the struggles of this sower to the end that we may have a balanced understanding are we still together let's continue our story the bible says an order fell on good ground and it sprang up and bear fruit and hundredfold and when he had said these things he cried jesus started crying imagine that as i'm teaching you now i just finished then i, I pause and i start crying when the Bible says he cried, in many regards, he really cried. It's not just that he lifted his voice loud. He really cried. Why did he cry? 
he that had ears to hear let him hear how can you finish talking to people my brothers and my sisters this is jesus adult jesus not the child learning something in the temple and you stand and teach people and then start crying do you know why because we're saying wow jesus are you this smart and jesus said oh dear jesus was revealing through this story what was happening as he was teaching it was not just something that happened one day alone he was crying because there was a repetition of that story real time as he was talking he being the sower are you getting what i'm saying now yes let's go back to verse 5 now there are certain informations that we really really need to believe and understand about this to help our fruitfulness I, I just thought to explain this parable notice that Jesus was so passionate about this parable he didn't allow any human being interrupt the interpretation he said I will interpret it myself there are many times he would not interpret certain parables he would just leave them but this one he says so that there is no confusion I will explain and in many times Jesus will leave some details out in explaining a parable but this one every single detail was explained to tell you his level of passion let's go to verse 9 let's finish and then we'll come back to verse 5 go to verse 9 and his disciples asked him saying what might this parable be are we ready now let's hear Jesus interpret his own parable and he said unto you hallelujah it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God this is how he started interpretation Jesus interpreting now and I said leave that matter the reason why I will interpret this to you is because that thing you see is a coded message but unto you it has been given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God but to others in parables that seeing they might not see and hearing they might not understand every time the Bible use hearing twice the second hearing is understanding are we together now next verse now the parable is this I love Jesus now the parable is this number one the sower the seed is the Word of God mm. the seed is what not a business idea we are talking fruitfulness here the seed is not an investment plan listen carefully the seed that produces that harvest is the Word of God number two those by the wayside are they so those soils are people listen carefully people who have hearts the wayside are people the rocks all of that they they are different states of people's hearts notice the goal is to produce result but everything is happening inside a man's heart it just uses a farm to explain the entire labor of that fruitfulness is happening within the man, not outside the man. Are we together tonight? It says, those by the wayside are they that hear. Then cometh the devil and taketh away the word out of their hearts. Are we together now? Out of their hearts, not out of their life. He did not touch anything external. He just came into their hearts, removed the seed of the word of God, and left every other idea there. He didn't tamper with their ideas. They didn't tamper with all their plans. He just carried the word factor and left every other thing. And the Bible says, lest they should believe and be saved. They on the rock are they, which when they hear, they receive the word. So they are an improvement to the first set. The, set, the first set just heard. But the second set heard and received the word with joy. Remember what the Bible says about joy. It says they fulfill the spiritual law here. With joy. And then the Bible says, and these have no root. Which for a while believe. And in time of temptation fall away. Next verse. And that which fell among tongues are they which when they have heard go forth and are choked. The first set heard. 
the second set heard received added joy the third set had and took action are you seeing now all an improvement to themselves and were choked with cares and riches and pleasures of this life and bring no fruit to perfection that means they started bearing fruit but the fruit could not mature the last set 15 but that on the good ground are they look look at look at this look at this they are they which in an honest and good heart having heard the word keep it and bring forth more fruit with patience they are not creative people what made them good was honesty that they had an honest and a good heart and by that honesty they were given an ability to keep it and the bible says they produce fruit four soils jesus is teaching on fruitfulness now let me tell you this kingdom mysteries are very foolish and childish they were designed that way so that you have to be like a child to understand their operations and that is the reason why many people never become fruitful and never get results because of the simplicity and the childlike character of spiritual communication are we together now look at this i am very grateful to god that the sower himself was not mentioned the bible never told us who the sower was so the sower could be anybody the bible tells us what the seed was and the soils the reaction how they were planted and the results are you getting what i'm saying now now watch this very carefully do you know that we need to congratulate this sower first for his patience and endurance because whoever this sower was it is true that he had to survive a lot when you plant a seed and then it dies then you go to another soil and it improves a little then you go to another soil and it improves a little the bible is very careful to let us see the transitions of this man and saying that all of it is part of an equation that can be captured in, on your journey to fruitfulness the same sower continued to do this until he got to a point what was the difference my brothers and sisters between the wayside and a hundredfold returns the wayside once upon a time now a benefactor of a hundredfold returns every soil was a description of a level of development and the corresponding challenges that would stop that man listen the first we see in the life of that person the wayside according to Jesus's own interpretation was a revelation of extreme carelessness you can know that whoever was the possessor of that heart condition was a careless person are we together now there was no discipline at all for the devil to you only enter a man's house and freely pick something without him unnoticed if the doors are not closed there is no system of guidance he did not place value on the information and there are people like that all over the world the moment the word of God comes to bless them they, they, they are sympathetic to what the preacher is saying and they hope they are understanding but quite honestly they do not mind whether the information is lost or not it has not become precious and valuable they have not seen the usability of that information and so the press to guard and to protect is not there are we together? You only protect what you have value for. If you do not have value for it, you may not protect it. When you finish eating your biscuit in a in a, um, the the uh, what they call it now, the the sachet or so, you throw that thing inside a dustbin. Why? Because it doesn't mean anything for you again. Listen, my brothers and my sisters, forget about true success and fruitfulness. If the word of God and the truths delivered do not mean a lot for you. You have to get to a point where you have a desperation, a hunger and a thirst for truth. Remember that we prosper according to the third epistle of John, according 
to the prosperity of our souls and the bible says that the end of your faith is the salvation of your soul the renewal the transformation of your mind are we together let me digress a, 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 a little bit and let's go back to our ephesians chapter 3 and verse 20. now on to him that is able to do exceeding abundantly so god's ability here is not in doubt the bible says he is able to do to be able means to be capable to be able means it is within your power and it is within your jurisdiction the bible says he is able to do abundantly above all that we ask or think let's hold it there ask or think i've explained it here when you say ask or think that means your asking and your thinking carries equal value in the spirit that both your asking and your thinking are both prayer requests that rise to god your asking can be saying god bless me and your thinking say god i just changed my mind don't waste your time again and that both of them are prayers that can rise to god the bible says god is able to do what we ask or do what we think the thought realm was where the entire story in the parable of the sower was it it was an interaction in the soils of their hearts and their minds notice that when in the interpretation of those things very little was talked about their hands and any physical energy it was an activity of their minds that determined their failure or their success and even the extent of the success the deliverance that comes through transformation is a much needed deliverance in Africa, is a much needed deliverance around the middle belt, around the north. We need a radical shift in our perceptions and in our understanding. Otherwise, we will continue to mock and flatter ourselves and never give room for the fullness of the glory and the power of God to manifest. As someone what do you think is the key to lifting and rising the next thing they begin to tell you all kinds of stories they tell you get a good job they tell you do a good business others will tell you find a good relationship you know somebody who is a destiny helper etc etc those things only matter when these foundational things are in place listen my brothers and my sisters the beginning of your success is when the word of god arrives in your heart and in your mind not when you get a job the starting point of all fruitfulness is the arrival of the word that lives and abides forever your heart and your mind write it down please your heart and your mind a major part of your fruitfulness happens there the manifestation the manifestation is something that can happen suddenly Man of God, listen to me. Businessman, listen to me. Career person, listen to me. The external factor plays a very, very, very small role in your overall success. You are a reflection of the prevailing power of the world within you. You are a reflection of the, the maturity of the word of God in your heart and in your mind your heart and in your mind that means that the word of god alters your perceptions the principles of the word of god have gained entrance into your mind i'm more concerned about the mind part because that is where the stronghold of demons the stronghold of territorial limitations dwell many times when the devil wants to keep people fruitless do you know what he does he makes sure that the word of God cannot get to their mind, but every other thing can get to their hands. Sometimes Satan destroys you by giving to you. He makes sure that your mind never receives anything. Your mind can receive, can be buried while your pocket is full. And you will, anything that your mind has not received is not your own. If they pay you a salary that only got to your hand, you didn't receive a salary. And very soon you will know. 
no matter what it is please hear me my brothers and my sisters if it has not been captured in your spirit and your mind it's not yet your own we possess things in our hearts and our minds first before our hands demonstrate that we have gotten it our generation is obsessed with having physical things because you see when you have physical things it can give a show of results are we together now and and it can suggest some form of progress but real progress is what happens in your spirit and in your mind say my spirit and my mind one more time say my spirit and my mind we're discussing fruitfulness now so that a brother and a sister aspiring to rise to be fruitful according to the word of god that you are not listen carefully that you are not allowed it is not given to you to really experience fruitfulness until that happens in your mind and your life and the bible says the first seed that must enter your life and enter your mind please hear me it is not an investment idea it is not a business idea listen it is not it is not it is not um uh, what do we call it products and services they only will make sense when the word notice that the bible never tells us that the farm did not have other things but when satan came he only searched for the word and carried it and left every other thing there the word of God is an incorruptible seed. Listen, please, my brothers and my sisters, get this. The word of God is an incorruptible seed. The mindset, it says, let this mind be in you. Philippians chapter 2. Let this mind be in you. And verse 5. Let this thinking, let this perception be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 5. Let this mind permit this mind permit this mindset to be in you which was also in christ every blessed person every world changer whether in the kingdom and in the secular will tell you that your point of advantage is not what you have in your pocket your point of advantage is not a car your point of advantage is not the house the point of advantage is the quality of the information that your mind like a womb has received and is able to incubate show me a man whose spirit and mind has received from god i show you a man who there is no power in existence that sustains the ability to destroy his fruitfulness it is first in your spirit and your mind while that is happening you're still with your trouser that you use needle and thread to sew doesn't matter while that is happening you are still in your one room with leakages everywhere stay there while that is happening there are no members coming to the church there are still you your wife and three other members don't worry you don't get the anointing just by hands laying on you the hands are only like a tap the hand stops on your head but the real impartation goes into your spirit when you drink water your mouth allows the water to go in and it stops but the water does not stop in your mouth it gets into your system if you leave water just in your mouth it will not do much you need to swallow it when you swallow it go to bed every other thing starts automatically the moment it leaves your mouth leave the rest a system has already been designed you don't just say water now where are you okay you are here shift left no 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 don't worry when you swallow a drug you don't look at the drug and say drug please make no mistake it's my eye not my back there is a design your job is to get it within you and let it stay sometimes some drugs take longer than others to start working there are some drugs that can even cause you to be drowsy to go to sleep so that it can really work and then it will damage everything that it needs to destroy whilst working my brothers and my sisters listen to me the foundation of true success is not running around with proposals i have a proposal i, I need capital i need this i need that no 
the major work that anybody will do it's not even carrying certificates all around and say just give me a job yeah, and my life will change there's nothing wrong with those things those things are profitless when your mind is barren it will not make any difference it will only convince you sociologically that you are better than someone else but sooner or later you will see that your life does not recognize those activities as progress are we together now there are many pastors who think that ministry rises just because of connections and invitations if i can sing here or preach here or do this no no your real fruitfulness is within the richness of the word of god within you the quality of the wisdom your interaction with the wisdom of god everything that happens is only a revelation of what is going on within the parable of the sower the entire the entire story of that parable is about the hearts of men a sower and seed the word of god the living word joshua chapter 1 please give it to us and verse 8 joshua chapter 1 moses is let's let's even start from verse 5 give us verse 5 we'll read down to verse 8 there shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of your life as i was with moses so i will be with you i will not fail thee nor forsake you he's doing something to his mind he didn't give me a new knife and say this i sharpened this knife it can cut through trees no he's doing something to his mind that i am empowering your mind that if you can believe this no man will sustain an ability to stand before you all the days of your life and then verse 6 it says be strong and of good courage for unto these people shall thou divide look at god speaking there are giants so and god is telling him how to share the land not how to fight the giants in god's mind victory was settled i've given you victory not by giving you anything physical i did something to your mind that's your victory mm. be strong in the lord and in the power of his might we win not just by physical fights when our spirits and our minds agree let every devil clear the way it's true Be strong and of good courage for unto these people thou shalt divide he didn't say you would die during war i thought joshua would say come oh god assure me these people have real knife will i die or i will leave already if god tells you you are going to share a land it will be stupid to be asking whether you will die god is saying look i've seen the end of it let me teach you how to share the land look look at victors look at fruitful people discussing sharing the land not fighting we are talking about Jericho and other nations here. You are standing before a fortified city and God is saying, this is the slice. This one will go to this. Are you getting it now? So you see somebody that does not have Gary and is saying, this one will go to charity. This one is going to go to my parents. I have five siblings and I will take care of them. And you enter and say, what is happening? And you say, I'm planning. I'm planning my victory. He said, you are planning your victory. Are you aware that your mother is in the hospital and we need just 20,000 to help her? You say, I'm already planning. I know that I will. Which I swear unto your fathers to give them. Seven. Only be thou strong. What is the requirement? Be strong. Not just be skillful. Don't get me wrong. These are factors, but I'm arranging them according to order of priority. Be strong and very courageous that thou mightest observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from me to the right hand or to the left that thou mayest prosper. This is God giving a man a recipe for success. And he's not saying anything about the war he's about to fight. He's not saying follow through the back door. And not The instruction for victory would come later. He's giving him a winning formula. Verse 8. 
this book of the law shall not depart from out of your mouth but thou shalt meditate during day and night that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous who will make your way it's not only God that makes a way he can empower you to make your way and if you are not ready to make your way prosperous it's a commitment it's a call to responsibility and thou shall have good success brothers and sisters life is systemic we are not the first to enter any realm we desire not at this level God has empowered people listen God has empowered people in business, in ministry, spiritual life, whatever area. God has, listen, God has allowed us to see the scars of people. He's, he's, the Bible is not just full of triumphs. It's also full of failure and scars. The Bible says that all scripture were written for our learning. That we through the comfort of scripture might find hope. So God allows the, 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 the record of many people's limitations so that you will learn. Be fruitful is a command. Be fruitful. Oh, thou sower, be fruitful. And you're saying, God, change my life. Change my life. And you're thinking in your mind, capital. Oh, God, capital. Just give me 500,000. And God, you can even go out of my life. And the devil is saying, I like this kind of prayer. I like anything that takes the word of God out of a man's life. He will leave the capital with you and take the word away. And you will watch with wonder how you will mess up your own life. If I talk to many of us now, I say, what are you trusting God for? In what area are you trusting God for results? I will be surprised how many of us are expecting external things to happen so that it can be proof that the word of God is working. No. When it has to do with fruitfulness, the major work is within. How many ministers will stay and build capacity with the word? There are ministers who do not have a Bible, but they already have suits in advance. and i believe in success we teach you all the dimensions of success but let me tell you just putting pictures and photos of nice things on your wall and mesmerizing without the word of god is scientology you are just joking and nothing will happen it is the word of god that empowers as many as believe him he gave them power to become jesus said follow me follow the word and i will make you make you the maker is the word because it is vain to wake up early in the morning and to sleep late in the night only to eat the bread of sorrow that's why business people who reject god are in trouble ministry people who reject god are in trouble career people who reject god are in trouble it's amazing how many people leave church to go and honor an appointment because they've indoctrinated themselves to believe that god is a luggage vain is the strength of a man in this world that we live in it is the richness of the word of god the richness of your spiritual understanding that translates into your fruitfulness listen invest in understanding invest in understanding before you invest in clothes invest in understanding before you invest in hair invest in understanding before you invest in cars and houses and all of this to invest in understanding is not to buy books to invest in understanding is not to watch sermons to invest in understanding is to have the preparedness to pursue exact knowledge to buy a book is one thing to read it is another thing to understand it is another thing. To apply it is another thing. The labor dimension of fruitfulness is done internally. Please listen to me. The dynamics of redemption happen in the grave. After the third day when everything had finished, the grave, Hades, the place of the dead, Jesus is done and he's ready to resurrect. Now he comes out in glory and we see the effulgence of his glory and he calls many sons into glory. Listen, if a major part of your life is visible for all to see, you are not successful. 
if a major part of your life is visible for all to see in this kingdom people are only allowed to see a minute part in fact it's even the manifestation most of the work is done within notice that your nourishment physically only a little part of it is seen they see the food and they see it entering your mouth every other thing the digestion etc etc be fruitful as as god has helped me to rise and grow i found myself i'm i'm becoming more and more emotional to my own surprise because i look at people and i can understand the heart and the burden of jesus that he says he looks at people as though sheep without a shepherd and i look i say oh i now see why africa is this way i now see why our lives are this way and do you know many of us believe that because we have sincerity life must answer to us sincerity is very important like we learned but it is not enough something about your understanding has empowered satan to destroy fruitfulness in your life something about your understanding please listen understanding is important when they employ you sam come it's looking sharp and smart look at this when when you employ sam you are not employing your body there are few employments where they border on size are we together now any size in many jobs can do what they are employing they are employing your understanding and the time with that understanding a job is time plus understanding in someone's assignment are you seeing that now yes so the factor is your understanding i've given this analogy come come stand here for me please look at this reason with me for one moment let's assume that this brother god forbid there eh? i always give this example let's call this guy an arm robber that is a thief are we together and let's call this one a pastor a man of god looking sharp and then you are angry at this guy and you are praying that police will apprehend him because he's a nuisance to society and you are praying that god will open doors for this man to go to the nations because you consider him to be a blessing now shoot both of them now it's, it's not good to talk about shooting and a pastor but just in my example shoot both of them and let them fall to the ground dead who really died the dead body is on the ground now are you going to call the dead body a pastor is the dead body a pastor no is the arm robber is the dead body an arm robber neither the dead body nor the past the pastor's body nor the arm robber's body are the arm robbers or the pastor the pastor has gone the arm robber too has gone their bodies are there so who is really the pastor talk to me who is really the pastor this body if Sam adds weight, will it scatter the anointing on his head? Will it make him to suddenly become mad because he's not reasoning well? Not necessary. In fact, not at all. Are we together now? If this arm robber suddenly adds weight, does it necessarily stop him from having the appetite to steal? This is the arm robber and this is the pastor. When Satan comes, he doesn't need the body. He goes to the mind. When the mind sits on the throne, then the body becomes a slave to the mind. The body becomes a helpless executor of the conclusions that have happened. The board meeting happens between the mind and the spirit. The body is not invited. The body only executes the decisions that have been agreed upon. Same thing with the pastor. When the Holy Ghost comes to you like he's coming to some of you now, he's not concerned about the body. He's concerned about your spirit. Then he's concerned about your mindset. Hand over to him your spirit and your mind so that he will plant in you the seed of understanding and watch how your body begins to reflect what has happened within you this my brothers and my sisters is how we are fruitful in this kingdom every other thing like creativity and all of these things only answer to this foundation say be fruitful be fruitful does not mean go and do business 
that comes later be fruitful does not mean go and look for capital be fruitful does not mean go and do all no no the heart preparation and your mind most believers have done well in the area of the heart the spirit but our minds are terribly unfruitful our minds continue to reject the spoken word of god concerning our lives and this is my assignment that if this year if we are to experience extraordinary fruitfulness then we have to trust god to begin to transit us listen carefully to transit us from different levels of understanding there is a requisite level of understanding that can receive what god wants to give you a man who is pastoring 5,000 members and a man who is pastoring 1,000 and a man who is pastoring 100 and a man who is pastoring 10. The difference is not their size. The difference is not their tribe. The difference is not even the God they gave their lives to. The difference can, may not even be the spiritual authorities they submit to. The difference is the construction of their understanding. That someone has allowed the Holy Spirit to construct his value system to be so flawless that he knows how to engage the principles of the kingdom and the physical results show. While he's activating these things, every member that comes to him is in his house. But something from within you calls them. And it's not just anointing. The health of your mind is a force too. It can call. The same way it can drive. Please listen to me, my brothers and my sisters. If you intend to be fruitful, except it's just a cliche. You know, and, and, and many times in Africa, I think this is the reason why we like signs and wonders. Not because they are such a big deal alone. We like it because we believe it is a cheaper route to results. Just prophesy. Apostle, why waste your time to teach this? Didn't God anoint you for me? I mean, just get bottles of oil here, touch my head, and just like that other person testified. That you bear fruits that abide. Well, while I was sitting down here, we just had a brief, maybe 10 seconds discussion with Ejimi, and he said, he shared a scripture that just blessed me. And he said, the Bible says, strong men retain wealth. Powerful. You are not strong just because you have it. The ability to retain it means you have conquered the forces that try to take it from you. Are we together? When you lift um, this weight, you don't just pick it up and drop it down and win. You must hold it for some time. It's proof that it's, it didn't just happen. You hold it there while you are shaking. And then at a point, they say, you have, the point has been proven that this one, you qualify to lift that weight. So there are things that when you hold, if you are not spiritual and you did not hold it indeed, it will slip away. But holding it for a while qualifies that you held it through knowledge. We don't hold things with our hands. Our hands only support what our mind has held. The real instrument for holding things is your mind. When it's too heavy for your mind, your hand can support. But you don't hold things with your hand. Is God speaking to us? You are seated here right now looking at me, swimming through a maze of challenges maybe, and believing that you came for koinonia so that you will experience transformation. Could be in ministry, could be in business, could be in whatever it is. But then the Lord is saying, I am limited by your understanding. There is something about your understanding that is not allowing me bless you. And let me tell you this. You see why Jesus wept. Any man of God who is committed to transformation knows how frustrating it is. It is difficult to get members to receive. That's why we take out time and pray. Not necessarily because what we are saying saying it's not necessarily the prayer that brings it are we together when revelation comes the truth is there but praying that when the seed is planted that the minds of the people can receive let me tell you less than 10 percent of members really follow and grow on the information they are given that's why testimonies are scarce that's why there are supernatural instant testimonies but not sustainable ones you will hardly see a member testify back to back for two months 
he usually will come once and you don't expect to find him again because most of the testimony was not gotten through knowledge prophetic intervention one miracle here i fell under the anointing and the next day this happened so i get a job by a prophetic word but i never get promoted you see that because the understanding that will make me that 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 trustable is not there i had the privilege to have a conversation with a very very notable uh, man you know one of the you know the second in command in one of the great institutions in this nation and then while he was talking to me and we we're discussing he told me he said my apostle let me tell you it is not true that there are no jobs it's just that the level of mental depravity of the average young man with risk and this is a born again believer he said we are frustrated every time we take people to come for interviews as they talk we just continue to look at them and the privilege of marking school of ministry scripts has taught me that it is true you know we insult lecturers we insult everybody they gave me they gave me i have done at least you know i love god and i love you i have marked things that i've said my god how in the world does this person plan to that's why teachings like it doesn't matter what happens in your mind just receive the anointing and rise we like it because we know that what is in there if god is going to remove it it will take time but i tell you don't fight with the spirit sit down and let him take that thing let him edit your understanding and plant the word of god and my brother and my sister you will watch your life rise to reflect what god is putting within you this is another place where the error of speaking without transformation comes just to call it no sir to wear it's like opening a tap and there is no container to receive it the prophet was only comfortable to prophesy when there were vessels because the oil would be wasted without vessel to just believe that you just keep calling things at random to your life with an empty mind is a joke this is Scientology and you have to be careful with all these materials we read around about the universe and all of this let me tell you by the grace of God God has granted us the privilege of light in this ministry from any dimension you look at it where vast people who are keen on knowledge so we don't speak from a standpoint of ignorance whether from business from ministry from whatever we are we are by the grace of god enlightened enough to provide the guidance that gives you balance i can tell you many people will continue to be frustrated because they lack the understanding on how the kingdom of god and his systems accurately work are we together be fruitful is not just a prophetic declaration alone that happens automatically be fruitful leads you through a process and the first of the processes is to allow the word of god to find expression in your spirit then to find expression in your mind the moment your mind begins to transit start rejoicing with no idea yes sir start rejoicing because inevitably the physical equivalent of everything that is already happening will begin to come to you in 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 circles of what you will think are coincidences but they are orchestrations based on a spiritual law i was sharing with the leaders and i said every time the student is ready the lecturer always shows up every time the student is ready the lecturer always shows up be fruitful he's not just speaking to your body be fruitful be fruitful be fruitful this is what will put money in your pocket be fruitful it is not the capital that is given to your hands that makes you fruitful it is not the business the investment or the job the job is only a physical platform to give your understanding expression to reward you nobody prospers from business nobody prospers from investment nobody prospers from jobs you prosper off your understanding all of these things are simply platforms that give your understanding room that's why two people can have the same platforms but different understandings and all those vehicles will produce at different rates even in the good soil it produces 30 fold 60 fold 
hundredfold. The same way we have several people here in Koinonia. Many of you are members, workers, and leaders, but your results are produced at different rates. Same anointing, same mentorship, same programs, same teaching, different results. All producing. Are we together? If you want to be fruitful, your assignment is not to just start buying good clothes. Thank God for that. I say this because you see, young people have a pressure that society is pushing on people now. They look at you and say, since when did you graduate? You say, five years. Say, you are still dressing like this. And the next thing, God blesses you with 30,000. Off you go to somewhere in anger. I must buy stretch jeans. 30,000. I must buy this and that. And you shop it. You, 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 you shop physical things and then you put yourself under pressure and then you come back and say, look, this is to announce to you I have now improved. We say, why? You say, because I have a bigger house. Because I have a bigger car. Because I have a bigger this. I have that. To me, that, that is increased. No, sir. And your mind keeps saying you are wasting your time. You only bought something for someone else. I look at your mind and the only thing you have bought is a book because that's the only thing that has stayed in your mind. That's why nobody can steal the book because your mind caught it. Every other thing can be carried away because it only came around your life but not in your mind. The wealth must be gotten here before it comes here. Are we together? Yes. Apostle, now if somebody gives me money to start a business, can't I just start and prosper? You will fail. It's not an insult. You will fail. 99% of the people who want to start business will fail. Not because there are statistics of failure. Your mind, you do not have the understanding of the system to prosper. Anybody who wants to prosper, your first assignment is to look for references and models. Transformation is easy when there are references. Not activity, not action. No. Listen, when there is no reference, your, your mind operates with imagery. And the moment there is no reference for the possibility that you want to step into, you are not going there. Hmm. Who is God speaking to? That this thing you are doing, you are just dreaming until there is a reference that's why by the grace of god we continue to walk with the holy spirit that he continues to lift us to make us better references listen let me tell you this if you sit under an apostolic ministry walking in signs and wonders you will enter into that grace fast because there is a reference your spirit can easily pick are we together if your pastor is a poor man by the grace of God, you will grow in the word. But it's going to be difficult because there is no reference. There is an impartation that results on themselves bring to you. Are you getting what I'm saying now? It's very important. That's why it's important. Every ministry and every organization rises to reflect the mindset of the leaders. It is true. Koinonia is a reflection of our mindset and also a reflection of our limitation. If you look at Koinonia and you see anything wrong, it is a reflection of the areas where personally my understanding and our understanding has not been well constructed. Our assignment is to bridge that gap as fast as possible through knowledge so that you will build what is akin to an edifice, a proof of mastery. As you grow, notice you grow in the secret, but you see your result on the members. You stay in the secret and God brings a new level of the anointing and you start watching in the physical to see. They were not there when God was giving you those new dimensions, but then you begin to get it. A time will come in this ministry, you will start seeing people have cars in strange ways. A time will come, you will see people start having certain results will rise. It is not just their personal faith, it's that there has been an upgrade in the secret place that can now receive that level of reality. A time is going to come when we will get our own property and sometimes it can be within two, three months and everything is put in place. You would think it just came. No, the lifting in the spirit. God now says, now you have the capacity 
there are things if God gave me today, I prayed for it for years. But I look at it today and I thank God for not answering those prayers. Because had he given me, it is true that you would have been a waste. The same way you have been praying. Notice that certain things seem to never get answered in your miracle service request. And it is not always that demons are stopping it. It is God's mercy that is keeping it from you. Because it will be a waste. And if you lose it, it will take a long time before it comes. So God will keep it for you. And let you just wallow in your interpretation, calling it delay. Whereas God is keeping it like a faithful caretaker until your understanding is able to sustain it. Are we together? Yes. This book of the law shall not depart from out of your mouth, but thou shalt meditate, 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 meditate. Value for the word of God. Listen, let me tell you, I, I look at people in this ministry and I am blessed the way God is lifting people in this ministry. Sometimes I, I, I know how I met them and I know how they came and see the power of the word of God transiting people the word of god is not a charm the word of god is a compendium of the principles of god the understanding of the systems of god and obtaining grace to engage them is what changes your life listen a day will come you will sit down and say god stop giving me money as far as my personal needs are concerned i don't know what to do and god says it's an irreversible process it will keep coming so god will say divert anyone to the kingdom but to stop it it can't happen again Wait till I teach you on wealth this year. God taught me something new. Ah! You see how you clapped? It's a reflection of the passion and the prayer. Oh God. Well, and it's not an insult. It's a wonderful thing. But let me tell you my brothers and my sisters. If this mind does not change, your life will not change. A man is in bondage when his mind is in bondage. No matter how free he is, he is bound. Watch my knee was bound and kept in prison many things happened to him but when they bound him he spoke loudest because his mind was still alive hallelujah glory to the lamb glory to the father you are seated on the throne hallelujah encourage you sit down sit down we're going to pray we spend time worrying about people who don't like us do you know if they are not in your mind they can't do you anything wickedness only hurts you to the degree to which you allow it to step in it's true that you immune your mind that you come from a family where people say you too you want to rise you are also joining them you are coming to that that stupid place where there are you people are just jumping for nothing and you feel stupid and sometimes in that stupidity you open the gate of your mind and allow them to enter when they enter your mind you are gone set a guard over my mind it was a prayer set a guard Lord, that no matter what happens around my life, shield my mind and my life is safe. If you injure yourself, it can heal. Are we together? But the Bible says a broken spirit dried the bones. The bones can be healthy and the spirit broken and the bones begin to reflect what is happening. You don't off this light by breaking every bulb one by one. The light is reflecting the health of a generator and the health of a switch. Just because one switch is faulty, every healthy bulb will remain off at the mercy of one switch. The focus, my brother and my sister, is not in doing physical things. This anointing and this lifting you see, is not by physical connection. 
I'm a good musician. Invite me. I promise you that in the name of Jesus, I will rise. No. Let me tell you how to be invited. Stay in the secret place. Allow the spirit of God to brood. He will give you one song. He knows what men cannot resist. He will coordinate by all grace and anoint you one song that you will raise. People, and he will make sure the ear of the person who can help you hears that song. And he says, who sang this song? Come to my church. He will array every other helper and he will anoint you so lavishly that day. You, you rise like a spring up and never go down again. The systems of lifting are very easy when your understanding is in place. It is difficult for God to lift a man whose understanding is unfruitful. You will frustrate the potentials of the spirit. Listen, brothers and sisters, this is a call to sit down. This running around and premature manifestation, comparing yourself with yourself, the Bible says they are not wise. The key is to sit down. Someone will come dressing sharp like Sam is looking and try to intimidate you and say you have been in this area for years. The only thing I hear is ba 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 and your empty head, empty pocket, oh yeah, take and go and buy Indomie and you feel stupid as you go to the shop with 1,000 naira and say, God, is this how you plan to disgrace me? And God will say, if I give you money, have I not insulted you? Listen, brothers and sisters, don't be so poor that all you have is money. If all you have is an object you remove from your pocket or an object that is stored in a bank out of fear, you are truly poor. Follow me when I finish those words. I told you be fruitful. We are just starting. Then there is multiply. Then there is replenish. Then there is subdue. They are not the same. Never be poor such that all you have is just money. If all you have is money, you are extremely poor because there are many things money cannot do. Most poor people agree with what I'm saying because they have been angry about money since, not because they understand it. You say this in an average church and people say, yes, it's true. It's just an opportunity to be angry at something they've tried to get. But it is true. God is giving you what is better than money. You know this issue of saying this person is worth this, worth that. Oh, Pastor Alpha, you are worth 10 million. What, what nonsense. What do you mean I'm worth 10 million? No. What do you mean you are worth 100 million, 1 billion? Those are just carnal expressions. Sensual manifestations. And it's not just, oh, I'm worth the blood of Jesus. It's true too. But you can be worth something solid that is greater than money. Hallelujah, glory to the Lamb, glory to the Father, you are seated on. Listen, I have taught you that there are things when you have in life, only the poor need you. There are things when you have in life, only the rich need you. There are things when you have in life, only the educated need you. There are things when you have in life, only the uneducated need you. There are things when you have in life, only children need you. There are things when you have in life, only young people need you. There are things in life when you have, only old people need you. But my brothers, there are things when you possess in this life. When you possess it. There, listen, listen, listen. You walk life at your terms. The great see you and call you great. This is what God is giving you. Sit down. We are going to pray. Listen, look at me. Make no mistakes to think all this labor is simply to get money to your pocket. If that's all I'm doing with this teaching, I've insulted you. I deserve to be arrested for insulting you that bad. If all that we're doing in Koinonia is just to get you to a point where you can have a car or a house, it's an insult. You don't need to hear what I'm saying to buy a car or a house. What I'm giving you will make kings stand before you and look at you. Listen, they will come with their pride and hang it like Sheba in front of your door and stand and say, teach us wisdom. Are you getting me? I pray in the name of Jesus that you understand that there is a more superior way of living. 
I can meet Sam and Sam can bring out some money to sow into my life as a man of God and I collect what Sam has brought and I believe I'm valuable because he gave me some money I look at the money and smile and then I run away no listen when you get what I am teaching you and putting in your mind you will find out that the equation that the world uses a young man you save for 10 years and get a house that equation is for some people I'm exempting you from that list are you getting what I'm saying listen to me oh borrow money from the bank and build a house then repay over 30 years no there is a dimension that when you have my brothers and my sisters an estate developer will come to you and look at you and say can I give you the privilege I've taught you something look at this isn't it amazing that the greediest people in the world are still givers it's just that you are not the one they give to let me tell you this there is nobody that is really greedy they just believe you are not deserving of that level of communication some of our parents we will call them and say daddy support me and they will refuse yet a man of God will come to the city and they will carry ten times the amount you have been begging and kneel down and say sir can you give us the privilege to sow they are not greedy they just believe it's unfair to give you that much listen your pride should not be a car your pride should not be good clothes what you are receiving you have left the level of car and clothes since what you are waiting for now is the systems that bring them i want you to believe in what i'm telling you if you think right now what you are getting is what will give you a car what will give you a car finished since 2013 14. you are receiving what will subdue nations not a car what is a car what is a bank account how many what is a visa to go to abroad london is it jupiter listen be careful the things that represent your expectations don't shortchange yourself god is giving you the keys of the hearts of kings of nations not not some little one one jeep here one this and you say now i have a jeep my mind oh, god no please a time will come we'll just sit down and testify and we'll be grateful god just did this and that and that to be an insult that what you are learning now is just for an estate now an estate a car my brothers and my sisters be patient with god and be patient with me and watch what your life becomes it's a guarantee that i give you by god we're not talking of buying a car we're not talking of buying clothes we're talking of shutting the gates of nations I had the privilege to meet with a very great woman of God who is also a business person and while we were talking she was telling me her itinerary and she said she's on her way to France right now that the president of France they need to have meetings I said this is it whereas some mediocre somewhere is there harassing people just because he bought an expensive shoe there are people deciding the destinies of nations a president of a nation like France calling for you to sit down this is what God is training you to become the level of anointing you are receiving is not to compare yourself with somebody in your family to say I am first that's mediocrity that is for somebody who is just passing koinonia to go to his house that's what that person receives as the gift for just passing to go I testify testify that your goodness is real I testify that your goodness is real your goodness is real I testify Your goodness is real, I testify. Listen, the work you are doing in your destiny is what you are doing now. A time will come when from morning till night, all that you will see 
is testimonies of men coming to serve your needs it will surprise you and because you will not be a man of god as it were you know most times we've thought that these things only happen to men of god it's not true these are the systems of the kingdom you've heard me say that we will all be great and that we will all know ourselves keep watching keep watching what our children will be keep watching most times people don't believe truth until it's too late there are people today who look and say i used to know this man it's not used to know god is giving you an opportunity to catch a flight that only the hand of god can limit where it is going it is by the spirit listen this tonight is a message of hope so that this pressure to prove a point throw it out of the window you have left that realm since hear what i'm telling you you have left that realm since pressure to prove a point oh apostle I'm, my desire now is to trust god let me just get a four bedroom flat and god says but you got a four bedroom flat right when koinonia started it is just coming through the loins of time to manifest who through faith subdued kingdoms there are some of you let me tell you when you're you see this is why when you see the physical manifestation of certain people's results the level of their transformation does not allow them to start physically at certain levels you see god jump to a height is because of the vastness of their level of understanding there are some of you here you will be surprised that your first car will be a jeep and people will be angry not because a jeep is anything god says if if i will have to be this is the fairest i can be to you based on how you have transited and then you will be surprised to find out that while you were thinking god would just give you a two-bedroom flat and this and that god will bring you to a five-bedroom flat and god will say this is just to give you the convenience to start out in life and people will be surprised because it's not in your heart it's amazing how believers mark time under certain achievements it tells you that they didn't plan to go far one man of god sent me a text sometime and he said somebody sent him five thousand dollars said apostle i can't believe i'm holding dollars five thousand dollars and he was shouting he was saying oh god thank you and i sent him a text after a long time i said mister <clears throat> be careful that can be the very reason why you go down if your whole life is worth five thousand dollars you are very small are you getting what i'm saying that one person here one person will be able to have the resources that can completely clear an idp camp one person without making noise this is what god is raising you to become and you will not even consider yourself to be a kingdom financier doing that you are just somebody who loves god Hi. be patient be patient i cause the spirit of hurry be patient be patient watch what our children in koinonia become when they are five ten you will look at their lives and you will see how wealthy they will become independent of your contribution by engaging the world themselves there are some of you seated here right now and all you are dreaming of is starting your church and the anointing on you with all humility even many overseers do not have it and god says sit down there just sit down because i'm not giving you a church i'm giving you territories territories not just a small church to flatter yourself and compare yourself between a group of pastors and say i am better no sir no sir i testify testify that your goodness is real I testify, testify that your goodness is real. Hey, your goodness is real. I testify. that you think God did not answer 
he's answered it since it's just that you didn't know how the answer comes he answered it since some of you god looked at your prayer request and all he saw was a blank sheet because everything you wrote you are bigger than it already and god did not see a need god is saying you've not given me a prayer request you wrote nonsense there lord if i can just have thirty thousand every month and lord if i can and god just looks at it and says the level of the work that is in you can only allow for minimum a hundredfold return i say god but i'm a village boy i'm a village girl and god says leave all of that one and stay with me listen beware of the pride of unbelievers respect unbelievers who have gotten knowledge but there are many unbelievers who are ignorant and you see them doing making all kinds of noise they will rubbish you and make you look small i sense that there is a spirit that is just going around great believers to make them feel small to make them look like we have waited so long is it that god cannot give you a shoe what is in a shoe that god cannot give you what is in a cloth you mean you are still using a, a second hand with one ah, but you should have left this level and you go back feeling stupid and god says my daughter forget about this are you ready to pray be fruitful he's giving you the keys of nations the keys the keys the keys not the key of a territory the keys of nations listen today by the grace of god koinonia has become like a place of pilgrimage you cannot believe the number of people who want to come here for visit i've had to restrain many of them pleading with them because I think that we may not have the facilities to truly honor them as we should. It is not location. It is not where you go. When you stay with God and the light shines from you, my brothers and my sisters, you will become a praise of nations that people will look at you and our family will say, we've been praying for rising. We didn't know God answered it in a person. We thought God would shift us to another territory. Lift your voice and begin to pray in the spirit and say, Lord, thank you. Though my beginning may be small, though my beginning may be small, but my latter end, though my beginning may be small, if someone pray, I am fruitful. I may not yet manifest fruitfulness in my pocket. I may not yet manifest fruitfulness in a job. I may not yet manifest fruitfulness in my business but in the name of Jesus I declare that I am fruitful Gentiles to my light Gentiles to my light are you praying koinonia shalaka be fruitful be productive God is altering your thoughts altering your understanding we win by the health of our spirit man and the health of our understanding God is showing you the laws of the spirit showing you success systems take your eyes away from the physical results I assure you nothing will stop them from coming men may mock you they may laugh at you where is the increase in ministry if you are really anointed where are the invitations to travel around if you are really anointed who is placing a demand on your grace they will say but forget about them and stay with the god of all flesh let him walk upon your spirit let him walk upon your mind allow that pregnancy that is in your mind allow it to reach maturation and watch the wonder that you will produce your goodness is real testify your goodness is real your goodness is real Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are going to challenge the spirit of impatience.
listen God is a God of speed but God only gives you your inheritance when you are built up everybody say built up be careful with unhealthy comparison business people listen career people listen we were all classmates now this one is like this this one has two houses and i am here nothing is moving be careful if you see that in your life know it's an attack listen listen especially for our dear sisters listen to me my adorable ladies let me tell you this you listen to what this arrogant world without christ is telling you you will not amount to anything they will make you feel stupid for loving god they will make you feel stupid for staying and growing you will look so cheap and weak but you stay and let god adorn you like hadassah and lift you like a trophy in one day one day what is a prayer point of nations come to you because you are prepared don't be ashamed of where you are you are still fruitful don't be under pressure listen listen let me tell you this if you can conquer the pressure of proving a point you have conquered life the pressure of proving a point I need to prove to the people in my family I need to prove to the people in my village they've been saying what are you doing in Zaria for five years eh? are you cursed that your life is not rising hold on when God is done with you ah, my deliverer is coming my deliverer is standing by my deliverer is coming my deliverer is standing by Let me tell you a humorous story and then we'll pray some time back i was to inv be invited somewhere one of the places that i went to minister and a man of god was called and asked and said do you know apostle joshua selman and he said well i've heard about him but i don't know him and the man at the other side of the phone advised the the people to invite me and said Can't, we don't know this man don't invite him rather invite a b c d and the person at the phone said you don't know the encounters i've had with this man it's impossible for us no matter what you say we must invite him that's what happens when you wait for god there are men that continue to pray secretly why don't you fall so that it will justify their prophecy but my brothers and my sisters when god puts something in your spirit and put something in your mind you have watched people waste their time forever they will waste their time forever it is the finger of god that lifts you and keeps you they will finish a meeting and say don't promote pastor alpha sit down here he will never rise just when they finish the man goes back and by the next day the promotion letter is out listen there are not too many people like us on earth it's important for you to understand this it's not pride it's a breed that is plucked out of fire your deliverer is coming. Your deliverer is standing by. Your deliverer is coming. Your deliverer is standing by. and admire today will be the things that will follow you tomorrow you would drive them and they say we can't go you called us you called us but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his methodology his systems and all other things is a guarantee except this word your certificate can only take you so far your intellect can only take you so far but my brothers and sisters i commend you to god he says i commend you not just to your certificate 
not just to the advantage of your tribe not just to your family connection i commend you first to god and then to the word of his grace and he leaves you with an assurance that it is capable of building you up and giving you an inheritance a time will come those who mock you will give up they will see that you have risen to a height and a level where it will be stupid to talk about you the lifter of men lifting you I like you to decree and declare no power is stopping me from being fruitful fruitful in my spirit fruitful in my mind koinonia you pray the anointing is growing in my spirit i'm full of the power of god full of the holy ghost some may trust in shadows and others horses but i trust in the name of the lord i may not have relatives to back me i may not have a wealthy family to support me but i have received god and the word of his grace that is able 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 to lift me outside i will pray why we look not at the things that are seen but the things that are unseen for the things that are seen are temporal 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 Hallelujah. Be fruitful. Carry that mentality. Every time the word of God says be fruitful, the devil takes you to your ATM and says how much is there. Every time the word says be fruitful, he says so why are you thinking of paying rent? You are even trusting God to raise the money for the rent. Does that look like fruitfulness? Let me tell you, the devil is a liar. He's a master of the sense realm. And if you dwell there, you will say, where are the members? You have 10 members and you have the effrontery to say you are fruitful. Are you ready to prophesy to yourself? Spirit, soul and body, I am fruitful. Decree and declare. I will make you exceeding fruitful. Nations will come out of you. And kings out of your loins. Businessman prophesy. Yes, sir, with no evidence. I am fruitful. I am fruitful. Blessed is the man that shared the Lord, that delighted greatly in his commands. His seed shall be mighty upon earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. Wealth and riches shall be in his house. And his righteousness endures forever. Man of God, I do pray. I'm fruitful. The anointing is at work in my life. Nobody can reject the investment of the Holy Ghost upon my life. It may take time, but I'm rising in the name of Jesus Christ. My family members may not yet see the hand of God upon my life. Everybody around me may doubt the finger of God. I may even doubt it myself, but I hear the command. I am fruitful. I am fruitful. In spite of your failures, I am fruitful. Declare fruitful. Hallelujah. That's my mindset. Fruitful. 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 Take your eyes away. I am fruitful. The landlord harasses you is true and fruitful still fruitful you may not have money to prepare a meal but in the name of jesus god is doing something the wealth is not transferred to your account the wealth is transferred to the soil of your mind our god is an awesome god he reigns from heaven above with wisdom power.
verse 5 don't forget philippians let this mind let this mindset let this body of understanding be in you listen hold on every great man you know is who he is not because of the wealth and the affluence the wealth and the influence is a receipt for something you have paid for when you see money in your pocket that money is a receipt you get receipts only when you have bought things the good shoe is a receipt the good clothes is a receipt the first class flight is a receipt it is not the reason why you are blessed it is the proof that you are already blessed are you getting me now how many of you know that sometimes when you go to a mall after you shop you have to patiently wait on the queue for the next cashier to attend to you that's what is happening to many of us you have already bought the things you are at the point of completing that transaction and then life will hand you the receipt it will come as a car it will come as open doors it will come as you never having to follow the bus for anything again it will come as you having the convenience to do certain things for the kingdom but until then be patient for some of you you are you, have, you are standing on that queue just waiting for your turn to come and my brothers and my sisters you will come up with a level of results that will surprise you can i tell you this don't be afraid of results that came through understanding don't be afraid of results that came through understanding most times you see because of the multiple failures like the man who planted when you plant by the wayside when you plant by the rock when you plant upon thorns that experience alone may make you think even the good soil will fail but you see when that seed begins to grow and becomes a great tree it will not only bless you it will bless the birds it will bless everybody who is passing around that's what god is doing with us are you getting what i'm saying very very important you are receiving something you are receiving the anointing but you are receiving an understanding so don't let the devil come and begin to talk jargons you will fail in your life you will fail in your business you will fail in marriage you will fail in um, um financially you will fail spiritually that organization you cannot be able to run an organization you, you cannot be able to run a ministry who told you that do you not know that it is wisdom and knowledge that creates stability they are the stabilizers of destiny and that's what god is doing so we are going to pray lord reconstruct my understanding to be able to receive the things that will make me fruitful lift your mind your, your voice and pray reconstruct my understanding reconstruct my understanding lord there are things in my mind that may not allow me to be fruitful i acknowledge them are you praying I acknowledge that there are limitations, territorial limitations, tribal limitations, sociological limitations. I've interacted with a kind of people who have kept me bankrupt mentally. They may be my family members, they may be my relatives, they may be my classmates, they may be well-meaning people. If someone pray, Lord, I give you the allowance to alter my understanding. There is something I know or do not know about ministry that is allowing me to be unfruitful. There is something I know or I do not know about finances that makes me to keep going up and down. There is something I know or do not know about the anointing that doesn't allow me to host very superior levels of grace. Quicken my understanding. Quicken my understanding. Quicken my understanding. Hallelujah. I apologize for taking time the holy spirit is giving me a scripture isaiah 11 and verse 2 what's still praying? isaiah 11 and verse 2 can you still have it projected isaiah 11 and verse 2 let's see if we can find it let me turn it here to save time isaiah chapter 11 and verse 2 hmm. i'm handing over to you a secret is a secret that make men really great and the spirit of the lord shall rest upon him the sevenfold manifestation of the spirit of god and the spirit of wisdom and understanding the spirit of counsel and might the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the lord verse 3 it says and shall make him of quick understanding quick all of these spirits synergize themselves to make sure your understanding is quick 
this is what you have to pray a quickened understanding is a real miracle you can have as a student a five point c gpa yet your understanding is unfruitful the fortitude to understand life to know wisdom is understanding you become a priority personality by default your understanding upgrades you like you are upgraded from economy to a business class to first class your understanding upgrades you to a level in life where you never have to come down again you are not trying to stay it has stabilized you at a realm are you ready to pray finally lord quicken my understanding i confess that there are gaps in my knowledge i confess that there are gaps i i am learning already but my foundation is fighting my mindset i am i am still loyal to old ideas i am still loyal to old concepts lord is taking me a hard time to acclimatize myself to a new system of lifting i cry for mercy and i cry for grace is someone praying I am still sympathetic to a, a depraved level of thinking that will not allow you to do business with me. Hallelujah. A prophetic word is only useful when there is a vessel. The vessel is your heart. The vessel is your mindset when the Holy Spirit renews your mind it's like it's like a welder creating a container and once everything has been welded well then prophecy can deposit that spiritual investment upon you and you will find out that you will retain strong men retain wealth not money wealth the wealth of the anointing retained by strength not the strength of the flesh be strengthened in your inner man inner man that's where true true strong people are even physically if you are stronger than me it doesn't guarantee that you can defeat me is that true because my mind can create a strategy that will defeat you that's how it is it is not always to the physically strong it is not always in physical agility but the health of your spirit mind and a well-developed understanding you see i teach you and continue to stand with the holy spirit to work on our minds because as your mind begins to seek transformation it must be guided are we together the mind is like a womb seeking for any kind of seed and there are other seeds in other sessions i will show you that there is the part two of that parable that Jesus gave. We'll go to the part two. While men slept. That's the part two of that story. Another sower also came and sowed a seed and left. So there are many sowers. And there are times you can open up your heart because you want to succeed. You open up your heart to zodiac and Scientology and all kinds of things to try to manipulate the cosmic world to release energy and once have I spoken and twice have we heard that all power belongs to God there are certain liftings if it happens it is only God that can do it are we together I declare over your life in the name of Jesus be fruitful in the name of Jesus be fruitful in your spiritual life be fruitful in ministry be fruitful in business be fruitful in the name of Jesus Christ I decree and declare for many of you it will do you like a dream for many of you this is the week that your manifestation begins in the name of Jesus and I speak over you that my God is able to make all grace abound towards you so that ye having all sufficiency that you will abound in every good thing I decree and declare be fruitful be fruitful in your spirit mind be fruitful in your mind may the spirit of grace coordinate you to the exact information required for your lifting and I pray for courage there are people you have to say no to and have the grace to say look 
I love you, but I have a track record of you being the reason why my mind will not receive the things of God. You don't have to hate people, but it's time to construct your environment creatively to allow the Spirit of God bless you. You don't have a serious meeting outside on the road. You go to a boardroom. You need to make that atmosphere for the spirit of revelation to come. And sometimes you need to take away distractions, distractions, distractions. It can come in form of good friends who will never allow you sit down and think. And this affects all ages and all ranges. There are people who have made a commitment to go nowhere. You don't have to hate them. Like Abraham, when you get to the base of the mountain, plead with them to remain there. If not, they will not allow you offer Isaac and be the father of nations. Are we together? I decree and declare this weekend for many of you, by the spirit of the living God, return with strange testimonies. There is an increased grace for performance in this house. I decree again in the name of Jesus, return with strange testimony. Yeah. Hallelujah. Give Jesus praise. <laughs> All through this week, the weekend into next week, I'd like you to carry this mindset. Be fruitful. Be fruitful. Be fruitful. The focus is not just on your hands. The focus is on your mind engage what i've told you go and sit down go on youtube sit down don't search nonsense don't go on youtube and sit down searching movie and watching this i was teaching the leaders in my opinion i'm not on any social media platform but i think one of the most useful social media platforms in my opinion is youtube it's true there is almost nothing that is needed for your lifting, even customized to edit nonsense that you will not find there. You have the liberty to edit a lot of things and go for exact knowledge, whether it is about the anointing, whether it's about this. You can see it and get it away if it's not useful for you. But take away laziness, please, please, please. The phone God gave you is for your mind. Are we together? Yes. The song is ministering to your spirit. The truths are ministering to your spirit and your mind. Sit down. Sit down. Wake up in the night. Be intentional. Carry a notebook. Carry videos. Carry this. You may not have money to buy CDs, but God was able to ask somebody to send you 2,000. It's not just miracle alert. It's so that you can buy data and sit down what is the secret to this and this engage your mind engage your mind engage your mind don't be like the foolish virgins engage your mind carry extra oil it was time that showed who was wise and who was foolish all of them started as the same women all virgins time is what separated the wise from the foolish are we together please minimize roaming around the street if you cannot sit down in one place it's an attack on you it truly is an attack if you don't have anything doing outside for god's sake go back to your house go back to your house you must not just go around visiting everybody people are busy the time for visitation will come when you enter your sabbath but for now, sit down. I expect every young man to be up and doing. You wake up tomorrow morning, you don't just yawn and cross your legs. You get up and sit down. It's time to do something. In the name of Jesus, what am I doing today? I'm learning on the anointing. You write. You are studying scripture. Remember, God is giving you an international ministry. And you are not making noise. You don't need to know how much the price of suit is. Settle down now. Jacos Kaprakata. Your one, two, three hours daily prayer. Keep to it. Keep to it. Keep to it. You wake up in the morning. The cold is too much. Say, I resist you in the name of Jesus. I must get up. The foolish man, because of the weather, will not plant. He will say it's too cold. And he will not have anything to reap in harvest. Are we together now? <laughs>
and please let's help ourselves you see me speaking to you passionately our time is gone if you see somebody who is not settling down seriously and not serious with his life if you have access and you are a stakeholder in his life you can call him and say look my brother i appreciate you a lot but you are gallivanting up and down it's time for you to sit down today you are in this person's house next tomorrow you are there next tomorrow you are in abuja next tomorrow you are in lagos next tomorrow you are in mina please sit down one thing is needful this is what mary has chosen sit down your phone should not be for watching movie your phone is not for watching indian film it's not for soap opera you will not die if you don't watch those things my brothers and my sisters sit down sit down sit down there is a price for greatness every time you want to slack just remember your children whether or not you have physical children remember your children remember your aged parents remember the generation it will jack you up sleeping 12 hours you are causing your destiny are we together you must trust god for grace i told you especially for the gentlemen minimize snoring your night time night times are times when revelations come from heaven looking for men who are alert to come into their lives go and sell two of your suits and buy data and sit down if you need to trust God to buy a good phone and it is for the purpose of this I'm praying for you may my God give you a good phone if the purpose of buying a phone is to prove to somebody that the word of God is working may God make what I preach tonight after all this time I've spent to really re-echo in your head again in the name of Jesus Christ Father thank you we give you all the praise in the mighty name of Jesus you are here and you are not born again Jesus said ye please keep standing I notice that every time I'm about to make the altar call people start leaving please that's not correct let's be patient when the altar call is taken let's respect them there are people here on hearing me speak the Holy Spirit began to speak to you and said there is need for a renewal there is need to begin a fresh walk you are here overflow one two three and anywhere else online i want to give you an opportunity to hand your life over to jesus and for many of us to dedicate your life to jesus there's nothing to be ashamed of there's nothing to be afraid of two minutes for this our time is gone wherever you are summon the courage make your way quickly and come to the front i believe there has to be someone jesus is talking to don't be afraid don't be ashamed don't wait for someone to come before you come is there someone god is speaking to tonight you want to rededicate your life please if there are people outside clear the way for them to come in quickly 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 i believe there has to be somebody are we together now are there people coming let me know god bless you please quickly 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 thank you thank you now lift your hands everyone please if you're joining them come quickly and join them except for the one holding a child you can stand with your child um you're welcome sir god bless you you're welcome ma quickly quickly please if you're coming from any of the overflows please rush please rush please rush our time is gone thank you thank you sir thank you ma now i'd like you to pray after me and please mean it from the depth of your heart say after me lord jesus say it again say lord jesus i believe in you that you are the son of god tonight i have heard your word and I have come to you just as I am. I surrender my life. I surrender my all to you. I receive you as my Savior, as my Lord, and as my King. I decree and declare that from today, I move forward ever 